emotions on Instagram. If you'd like to take your seats, the action will start in just a couple of minutes time. Thank you. Test, test. Test, test. All right, everyone, Fox will be starting in just a second. On this way to end the review, Ring of Horror, brought to you by Joe's Boxing Promotions, in association with our main sponsor, Flory Construction, and sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control. The three journalists with the groups, your inspector, Mr. Anthony Kirkby, your timekeepers at the bar, Mr. Stuart Lithgow and Mr. James Holborn, and your referees, Mr. Ron Kirby, Mr. Neil Close, and Mr. Dean Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're live streaming on Sporting Icons on YouTube. Please do check out the channel and follow Joe's Boxing Promotions on Instagram. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? <laughs> Bout number one on your card this evening, please welcome to the ring, John Spencer! And his opponent this evening, making his professional debut, please welcome to the ring, Dan Ingram! Contest will be sponsored by Sturdy Door Sports and it will be four rounds in the Super Featherweight Division. It will feature the man to my right making his 42nd professional appearance, weighing in at nine stone, two pounds, from Manchester, John Spencer! And his opponent this evening, making his professional debut. Weighing eight stone, thirteen pounds. From Durham, Dan England. The referee, Mr. Newport. Okay, I'm not used to the body of the boxing. Keep your heads up, keep your quinces up. I want nothing on the back of the end. Most importantly, defend yourselves at all times. Touch those. All right, everybody. Hope you're all doing yeah. fantastic. Thank you very much for popping on in. Hopefully you can hear me okay. It's very, very loud, very, very rowdy right in arena tonight. Live. Jobs boxing. Dan English in the black shorts. Pro debut. Trains with Jordan Williams at the Twins Boxing Academy. 
Um, I can't move my camera right now, if anybody is wondering. Oh, Dan English starting off faster. Oh, can you all hear me okay? You know, for a pro debut, Dan is looking very, very composed, very calm. I was watching him backstage. Very, very chilled. Very, very chilled. Now, of course, Dan English, he trains with the likes of Adam Heppel, who is the super middleweight Northern Area champion, uh, Kai Richmond. Very fast start, very fast start. With uh, Aaron Pete, Aaron Pete will be on after this one, so he trains in the same gym as Aaron Pete. Kelvin, thank you very much. So I said, this is live from Rain Arena. Now we will be having some special guests on tonight, doing some color commentary with me, as soon as they turn up. Very familiar faces. Now, Dan English's trainer, Jordan Williams, is probably the youngest trainer in the northeast of boxing. Very, very young man. And he really, really knows his boxing. Really does. He's got a hell of a step. Oh, huge fight. Oh, he's about to get an early stoppage. Looking real good. Well done, Dan. Aaron Peter will be on after. Be next fight. Now, I will be muting this in between the rounds for the music, which, of course, YouTube will give me a copyright strike, so I have to mute it in between the rounds and the ring walks, of course, as well. Now, this is a pro debut for Dan English, coming up to the end of the first round. Very, very dominant, very front-footed performance. Well done, Dan. Okay, here we go for round number two. Now, this is a four-round fight. It's at super featherweight. Or according to the notes, it's super featherweight. Which must be hard because they have a, a same-day weigh-in. So they weighed in about four o'clock. It's now seven o'clock. So only three hours to rehydrate as best I can. Of course, I was rehydrating backstage with them all. I was eating all their sandwiches and crispy cakes. Very nice. Again, I appreciate everybody tuning in. I said, I know that DAZN and Sky have a show on tonight, so I do appreciate you all. And there will be some special guests doing some commentary with me throughout the course of the night. We're hopefully going to have Tony Jeffries, the... Dan English wants our stoppage, doesn't he? Really wants our stoppage. And John Spencer, very, very tough, very durable, so credit to him. So a lot of people will go down after the round one onslaught. And that... 
again, apologies, I can't move the camera right now. If people are unhappy with the where the camera is at the interval, I'll move the camera upstairs so you're looking down and you, and you can see everything. But I'm a one man band. The original plan for this live weren't working. <laughs> I've got covered in sweat then. Oh, lovely jab. He's looking for the opening. There we go. Nice jab to the body. I said Dan's from a very, very good stable of fighters at the Twins Academy, trained by Jordan Williams. Very, very good stable. Aaron Preet. Aaron Pete, who's on next? Um, you've got Kai Richmond. You've got it's a whole host of prospects, all, all very, very talented fighters, Adam Heppel and others. Well, Alan Thornsby will be fighting number four. Oh, Dan's stalking him. There we go. See, the problem when you're at ringside, you get covered in sweat when uh, they get hit. So head down. <laughs> right, end of round number two. So I'm going to mute it for copyright. Three. All right, round three. Dan English looking very, very well. Sat right next to me is Danny McKee, who puts on this show along with uh, Matty Jobs. Danny, how's Dan doing? He's doing really good for his debut, to be fair. Um, Fox be the clever. Yeah, great. Now, you guys at Jobs Boxing, you know, you'll be putting on a few shows now. Are you still enjoying it? It's great. I, it's great for the Northeast and... Um, you know, we're just going from leaps and uh, bounce, you know, we're doing really well. Uh, the North East is doing really well. All of the boxers are doing really well. Can't kind of complain. Now, you've got this show tonight, and you've got another one in December at the Hilton as well. For half five, that's our little baby. That's how we started, back in Newcastle. So, yeah, it be nice going back up there in December. Uh, we're looking forward for it. Spawn. I said, like, a Dan English is from the Twins Academy Boxing Gym. He's got... We've had Jordan Williams. Excellent stay, but he's got the Twins Academy, isn't he, Danny? He does, sir. He boxes for um, Jordan Williams, down Twins, and he's currently managed by us. Again, I'm, I'm much appreciated to everybody who's tuning in. I know it's heavy competition out there tonight with Sky and Zone, so I appreciate everybody who pops in, even if you're just coming in just to say hello. Yeah, so Job's Boxing is the promoter for this one in association with Phil Jeffries. In fact, um, his uh, son, Tony Jeffries, will be here about 8, 8.30 to watch. A lot of you will remember Tony Jeffries. Of course, you'll be subscribed to his YouTube channel where he teaches people how to box, all that kind of stuff. Of course, he's a former Olympic boxer, uh, 2008 bronze medalist in the light heavyweight division. Well, Tony Jeffries will be joining me on commentary, or potentially at least. Very, very confident fighter, Dan English. You can see that. And he's just placing his shots. He's not wasting any. He's just placing them. 
Very, very mature performance for a pro debut. Very mature. Again, another dominant performance from Dan English. That's, that's round number three, coming to a close. Second fourth and final round. Hey, John, I see you, my man. I see you. Thanks very much for popping in all the way there from New Zealand. Excellent channel. Go check out Big Boys Boxing, by the way. Very, very loud in here. Very packed. So hopefully no audio problems. But you're not here to listen to me anyway. You're here to watch the fights. Again, I much appreciate every single one of you. If you can click a thumbs up while you're there, I appreciate it. Oh, Dan is unloading. Now, this is the kind of performance that Dan can look back at for his pro debut and be very, very proud. He's in with a very, very tough, tough John Spencer. He's very good. Uh, oh, he's down. Big body shot from Dan English. Oh, it's a shame the camera's not picking it up. Dan, can you knock him down, down the other side of the ring? Thank you. Oh, another body shot. He's down. Relentless pressure there. Big body shot. Oh, he's back to his feet. Oh, I'm so sorry. I can't move the camera. I'm so sorry. If he goes down once more, the referee will stop it. But credit to the referee for not just jumping in. What a performance. Professional debut, and look what he's doing. This is brutal. I mean, you could say it's coming because from the opening bell in round number one, Dan just went at him. No, John Spencer's earned his money tonight.
awesome together. How about a huge round of applause for two warriors? Your winner with a score of 40 points to 34. Roman Dominic. Dan Continues. Round number two on your card this evening. Please welcome to the ring, Josh Hood. And here's the final of this evening. Please welcome to the ring, Aaron P. Wow, very popular, Aaron Pete. This crowd is loud for Aaron Pete. Ladies and gentlemen, back number two on your card this evening is sponsored by Spenny More Sports. It will be four rounds in the middleweight division and it will feature the man to my right making his 36 professional appearance, playing at 12 stone exactly, from Manchester, Josh Poole! <laughs> and there's a moment to see the man facing him across the ring, undefeated, making his second professional appearance, weighing 100 stone, six pounds, 
from County Durham. I hope All right, everybody, so here we go. This is the second fight of the night. We have Aaron Pete taking on Josh Cook. Oh, very, very loud in here, very, very popular. Aaron Pete. Again, much like the previous fight, Dan English. Aaron Pete is from the same gym, joined by Jordan, Jordan Williams at the Twins Boxing Academy. This is Aaron Pete's second professional fight. On his pro debut, he got a draw where he dominated the first couple of rounds. Then the adrenaline kind of like got the better of him and he got a flash knockdown against him, so he got a draw. But he was very disappointed. But now he's he's uh he's fighting a high weight class now. He's fighting that middle weight in this one. Very, very popular, very popular lad. Very nice lad as well. I've done a few interviews with him. Quality lad. Good. Doesn't Josh Cook look a little bit like Spike O'Sullivan <laughs> with a moustache? Yeah, that's a good point there, Jono. Um, I don't really know how they got around the copyright. I'm, I'm presuming that they'd have to pay some kind of fee to, to uh, either YouTube or no in advance. I'm not sure. As I said, very, very popular lad is Aaron Pete. This crowd is loud. A lot of people are giving him advice in the crowd. A lot of different advice as well. Nice left hook by Aaron. Triple jab there. Actually, does Josh Cook look like uh, Gary Spike O'Sullivan or old Charles Bronson? <laughs> Good on him. Good on him. Second tell, round two. All right, round number two for Aaron Pete. Looked very good in that first round. Right next to me, Matt McCallum, the Wolfman. How are you, my man? 
How? I'm very good, man. <laughs> now, Matt, you were looking for a quick turnaround. You was actually looking to be on this show, weren't you? Yeah, right. I was going to be boxing tonight, but wasn't quite ready. Weight wasn't coming off. A um, few little niggles and injuries. And you've got to be 100% um, for any fight, you know. So we, uh, we'll, we'll put that on the back burner. And uh, I'm boxing on the 9th of December now. Yeah, that would be at the Hilton Hotel. I heard that they were looking potentially for a Commonwealth eliminator, potentially. Commonwealth Silver, hopefully, yeah. Just hope the Commonwealth board pass it. We found the opponent. Game kid, similar record to myself. Um, so let's let's do it, man. Let's get it on. And uh, what do you make of Aaron P's performance so far? He's tidy, very tidy boxer. Look at that lovely, lovely backhand. Now, Aaron P, he's trained by Jordan Williams at the Twins Academy. He's got a hell of a stable down there, though, hasn't he? He has, yeah, he's doing well. He's just a, a young coach, and, you know, it's impressive. I wish him all the best, I really do. He's got a, they've got a Northern Area champion now, and honestly, I, I, I think it's brilliant what they're doing. This is what the North East needs, Northern Area. Oh, he's firing hard here. Firing real hard. Very, very popular lap by the looks of it. Sells a lot of tickets, doesn't he? Promoter's dream. Yeah, that is very, very true. That is very true. Up after this fight will be Callum Fenwick, who's a stable mate of yours. Yeah, he's a good mate. And uh, been been big part of his camp, you know. Um, not just in the gym, but like the recovery after, you know. We... Oh, good shot. Oh, has he got him, eh? Oh, he's hurt him. Oh, taking a few back on that one. Move his head. Can't just stand there. Is it quite easy when you hurt your opponent to just see red and just go for it and then forget your defense sometimes? Yeah, definitely. And like, all you know, that patience comes with experience. And um, all you want to do is finish. You want to finish your opponent, you know? It's what every boxer, every fighter wants to do. But these journeymen, they sometimes lure you into a false sense of security. Might feel like you've hurt them, but <laughs> they're just waiting for a counter punch. And here we are approaching the end of round number two. Very good performance by Aaron Pete so far. All right, round number three. This is a four-round fight in the middleweight division. Actually, you've moved down to middleweight now, haven't you? Your last fight was a middleweight. Yeah, yeah, I am a middleweight, definitely. Next fight will be middleweight. Um, you know, I probably should have been there a while back, but hey, it, it's it's part of the journey. You know, you've got to you've got to figure thing figure these things out, and it takes time. That is very, very true. So you've won the uh, the Northern Area Championship at uh, Super Middleweight, which of course was always your aim anyway when you yeah. turned pro was to win that. So you've done that nice and early. Are you looking to get the English and the British middle? So what I wanted mate, for Christmas was a uh, middleweight Northern Area, and I, I I wanted to fight Alice Curry, but he shit his pants, doesn't want to fight me. So yeah, I hope he has this because you know he's he's maybe a, a top boxer. He is a good kid. I, I respect him, you know, but. Let's, let's get these big fights on for the Northeast, you know, for the people, give the people what they want to see. I totally agree. I think that uh, 
one thing the North East needs is everyone can be mates and support each other, but business is business, fight each other, it helps the sport of the North East. Yeah, exactly. Nice uppercut there by Aaron. Oh, good left hook as well. Looks like he stunned Josh Cook then. He's got a very good uppercut there by looks of it, Aaron Pete. Very good uppercut. He's, he's, he's tidy. He's got a lovely style, hasn't he? I think he does. No, he's just, he, you know, he, he, he's moving on the back foot there and he's letting, he's letting this journeyman, this, this opponent, who's, you know, a good opponent, he's letting him come to him. He's mixing it up. And he looks a lot more comfortable than what he did in the last one. Maybe like a pro debut nerd for the last one. Maybe, yeah, I, I didn't see it, um, if I'm honest, so I can't really comment. It's a good shot. Lovely. Good job, good job. Do you get nervous before fights? Um, I mean, the nerves sort of come in like waves, you know, but... With every fight, I feel like you gain more experience. It becomes more normal, and um, you I just overall ooze confidence. You know that confidence comes from all the hard work you put in, the, that, that lifestyle you've lived. And uh, I think it's is any fighter progressing in the career, the nerves, the nerves don't affect them. Like, and we're coming to the end of round number three. This is a four-round fight, so one more round for Aaron Pete versus Josh Cook. All right, and here we go. Round four, final round. I mean, so far, it looks like a bit of a whitewash, a 3-0 to Aaron Pete, you agree? Yeah, I would say so. I think he's he's done enough to win every round. Um, far busier, you know, landed the, the cleaner shots. The more, the more damaging shots, and overall picked up more points. So it's a good backhand. But he just, he's, he still, you know, he has a tendency just to, to get caught a couple of times there. You know. Have you sparred him? No, I haven't. He's quite a bit lighter than me, I think. What is he a welterweight? No, he's middleweight. Is he middleweight? Is he? Oh, I didn't know. No, I haven't. Well, that's that, that's good enough for uh, for the future. This crowd is very, very loud, very pro Aaron Pete. Good ticket seller. As Matt McCallum just said then, a promoter's dream. See? You know, he's taking cheap shots that he doesn't need to. It's another one, you know, he just caught with that jab. These are, these are shots that the, the ref could potentially be looking at and, 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 and should be, you know, scoring them. Lovely. Oh, good shot. And he comes back with a lovely one, too. So, would you say that Josh Cook looks like uh, Charles Manson or Gary Spike O'Sullivan? <laughs> I know, he doesn't look no, like Charles Manson, I don't think. <laughs> oh, Charles Bronson, sorry. That's what I meant. Bronson. <laughs> Bless him. I said, here we are at Rayton Arena. The main event will be...
Comey, the hitman Hodgson. Oh, good overhand right there by Aaron Pete. Much better performance from Aaron. Much, much better. Much better composed. Still, just still getting caught with unnecessary shots. I feel like leaves himself a little bit open when he, um, when he, when he throws. Sometimes, you know. I suppose that's just uh, experience as well under the lights, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. You know, I mean, he's, he's won that fight comfortably. Still, I agree. Well done, personally, I had that 4 0. Let's see how the referee scores it. With a score of 39 points to 37. Excellent job, excellent job. Right, I'm going to try and grab a quick interview with him. Congratulations, that's the kind of performance you're looking for. Aye, aye, it is mate, um, a bit disappointing all mate, I never box to the best of my ability like to be fair, but we got the job done mate, we'll move on, we'll only learn man, you know what I mean? As a very disciplined performance as well, you were placing your shots well, I mean, you took a couple, but that's fighting, fighting. Yeah, I do that on a daily basis, <laughs> but um, no, he was quite hard to hit and pin down, you know what I mean? Uh, he, was, he was quite hard to figure out, but we've done what we can mate, we've got the wins, you know what I mean, so I'm happy. Excellent performance, so well done. I know that you were disappointed after your last one, so now you put in a very solid performance. Again, congratulations and uh, enjoy your win. Yeah, thank you very much, Please welcome. 
Ladies and gentlemen, round number three on your card this evening is sponsored by Stanley Moore Sports. And it'll be four rounds in the world's weight division. And it will feature the man to my right, making his 15th professional appearance, weighing 10 stone, 7 pounds, from Manchester, Liam Fox. And his opponent this evening, the man facing him. There he is. Mookie Bot Kid. The perfect record. Making his second professional appearance. Weighing 10 stone, 2 pounds. From Hatston, Northumberland. <laughs> so this is a man my Callum stable mate Callum Fenwick in his second professional fight his first fight looked very very disciplined you guys didn't name him the milky bar kid for obvious reasons yes because he's uh he's black as he is a spades <laughs> no he's uh Callum Callum's shown so much improvement over like the last six to nine months he really does. He lives a life now, and um, he's, this is his second pro bout. I'm very confident. Um, you know, a lot of belief in him, and uh, you know, he, he believes in himself. Very tidy boxer. He's got a great guard as well. You know, I spar with him, and um, it's hard to get through his guard. I'm, and I'm, I'm heavier. You know, I'm a bigger lad, and I, even with the heavier shots, it's hard to get through that nice tidy guard. He's got a lovely, a lovely um, boxing style. You would you wouldn't believe he's been on the sunbed three times a day for the last two <laughs> weeks as well. I mean you can't tell, can you? <coughs> but for his uh, for his weight as well, he's got he's got power. He's just gotta be patient with this lad. Jim with an experienced kid who hasn't been stopped many times. So chances are of stopping them in these these four rounds is going to be it's difficult. Isn't it? It's so difficult. It's very it's very difficult. Yeah, because they're so experienced, and that's why they always get asked back. But they're there to give you work and good work. And um, you know, I've said to him and Matty, our coach has been saying to him, don't rush anything. Take your time. Be nice and clean and tidy. Nice head movement there. Very nice head movement. So you want to think that uh, Callum was out of the ring for the best part of, was it, two years before his professional debut? And it looks like he's been very active. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he looks like he's had a lot more than, well, one pro, pro fight before this, you know? He's had one pro, pro bout and half a round so far. But he does, he looks very experienced, you know. And um, this whole camp, he just, he looks better, he feels better, and he is he is better, you know, because every every fight camp, every fight you have, you gain so much experience, and you, you just become a, an all-round better professional.
go body shop. See, I see what you mean because uh, Liam Fox is throwing, but he's not landing. Yeah. Nothing clean on him, is he? It is. It's hard to get through that guard. He's got a very, very tight guard, um, and he makes he makes his he makes his torso very small. You know, it's exactly what you should do. He's got he's got a, a good traditional boxing style. Oh, good one! Lovely shot. Lovely. Lo Okay, round two. Unfortunately, I had to mute it in between the rounds due to the music. They were playing the Beastie Boys. Got a fight for your right. Very good song for any of you out there. You, Old school. Are you allowed to say that, though? They're not going <laughs> to... I can say them? it. Are you allowed to tell them what it was? <laughs> as long as I don't sing it, I should be all right. <laughs> Go on, sing it, please. <laughs> oh, good left hook there by Callum. Lovely. Just got out of the way there. Uh, he's very good. He's throwing that right hand a bit more already. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I just said there um, in the, you know, in the minute's rest, I said, Matty will be telling him to pick it up a bit. Pick it up. Shot. Very good. Very good straight right there. And again. He's not one to wear shots, though, is he? What's that, sorry? He's not one to wear shots. No, no, he's uh, he's, he's very um, um, economical, you know, with his punches. Because um, again, you know, if you're just you're just throwing shots willy nilly and they're not landing, you're gonna you're wasting energy. Very very composed performance. So far, in only his second professional fight, much like his Shot. first one. Shot! Shot! Very disciplined performance, this one. Very disciplined so far. Yeah, he's trying to sink him in a bit more there. Just doesn't want to get caught, caught too close, you know, and get, and get drawn into a little bit of a scrap. There's, there's a few, few little times it could, could have happened there, you know. Stay composed. Stay behind that job. He's got a lovely job. Shot! Okay, so Callum Fenwick, second professional fight. The show's promoter is Job's Boxing, and Callum Fenwick's trainer and manager is Matty Jobes, who of course runs Job's Boxing. The Job's Boxing Gym is located in Benwell, in, in, in Newcastle. Open to amateurs, open to professionals, and just open to the general public. If you want to go in and uh, just do some boxing training, even just for fitness. So that's Benwell, Newcastle, Joe's boxing. Hit it, son!
Second round, round three. Good. As you heard there, round number three for Callum Fenwick versus Liam Fox. It's lovely high hands there, you know, straight away. Oh, he's a big loop and left, left hook and he, and he catches it. That's what I mean, oh. he's got a lovely style. Good left of the body then. Yeah. Oh, add yeah. another. That's good, head body. And again, head body! Got to disguise these shots as well though, you know. He's a very tidy boxer though, isn't he? He is, I say for that. It's weird, he's got power. And this is the same day Wayne, eventually, you know, day before Wayne's when he starts stepping it up, he'll, he'll be making, he'll be making um, super lightweight. Super lightweight, really? So yeah, because what's this? This is, uh, this is well away, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is yeah, yeah. <laughs> He might even make lightweight. <laughs> you seen the shoulders on him, by the way? Everyone watching, you know, if you haven't already noticed, he's, he's, he's built like a coat, an upside down coat hanger. He's got the biggest shoulders I've ever seen on a on a lot of his weight. It's like it's like a cruiser weight, you know, shoulder wise. I imagine the spars between him, Joe Laws, or him and Nathan Kamiski must be quite interesting to watch. Yeah, him and him and Nathan, you know, they they, they give each other really good work. Um, Nathan's a, a proper powerhouse, and you know, Callum's improving all the time. He really is, and. Um, yeah, it's it's really good good to watch watch them watch them learn you know and, and, and grow as fighters. Up next after this one will be Ann Thornsby against Mikhailo Softus. I said if you've just joined this live stream here at Rayton Arena, promoted by Job's Boxing Promotions. This is Callum Fenwick currently in the ring. This is round number three. Dominating so far, very cool, very calm, very collected. Good shot combinations, good shot placement. Doesn't waste too much. Doesn't take too much back so far as well. But of course, when you're taking on experienced journeymen like Liam Fox, it, it's very difficult to get him out of there. They know how to survive. A very good performance by Callum Fenwick from Job's Boxing Gym. As any trains at Job's Boxing Gym under the guidance of Matty Job's. That's in Benwell, Newcastle. So go check out Job's Boxing. If you're in and around Benwell or Newcastle, pop on in. Sure. Coming up to end of round number three. They're going to the fourth and final round. Good last round. Short. Right, fourth and yeah. final round. Very dominant performance from Callum Fenwick in only a okay. second professional fight. Very good left hook there, and again. How would you rate Callum's performance? I think he's been fantastic. You know, he's uh, he's dominated every round. You know, he's in with a very tough, experienced kid who, you know, he's trying. What, what these lads do, they always try and uh, catch you with, with shots you won't see. You know, counter punches. And um, he's been caught a few times, but nothing to trouble him. And he's caught a lot on his gloves. You know, with that nice tidy guard that we keep talking about. 
but I think it's 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 been a dominant and um, you know very very um, very, calm as well. very calm and you just you know it's shown shown how much he's progressed you know this this display. Well, it is. I mean, I mean, it's his second professional fight, but it's his first fight God. in front of his own crowd. So, so there's got to be some pre-fight nerves for this one. Yeah, um, um, his debut was down in Bolt, wasn't it? He was very, very, very nervous for his debut, I remember. So I, I feel like he's, uh, he's a lot less... You know, he's still be nervous as hell for this, but again, it comes with experience, like I said. This is heating up the, the final round. Come on, Callum. Oh, so this is the fourth and final round. Actually, while I've got you here, I quite often get messages about live streams that uh, your fight versus Boris Crichton was probably the fight of the century. That's what a lot of people were saying. So uh, it was better than the Jordan Reynolds fight? Well, of last year we're talking about. Oh, all right, that's it, of course, of course. Yeah, hey, listen, I'm very, 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 very proud of that. But, um, you know, I obviously it didn't go my way. I got a bit sloppy. I was three rounds up when the, when the, when the bell went. Uh, sorry, when the ref stopped it. But um, yeah, listen, man, showed how tough I am, showed how durable I am. But he he, he won with, with experience, you know, he took his chance. Um, credit to him. Yeah, but from a fight fan's perspective, it was just both of you two just had your big moments where it was just an out and out war. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I heard him, I dropped him, didn't I? And ref, ref said it was a slip. What a load of shit. I fucking punched him. He might have slipped, but it was still from a punch. But, uh, hey, listen, this is why I do this. I, I'm an entertainer at the end of the day. And, I, you know, if people are happy and that's the feedback I'm, I'm getting, then great. That's what it's all about. I totally agree. All right, end of round four. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, how about a huge round of applause for these two fighters. That's got to be 4-0, isn't it? And once again, we go to the 40, 40 to 36. With a, with a score of 40 yeah. points to 36. Got to be. Well done. Henry! Two and oh. Two and oh. I'm going to try and grab a quick interview with him. Now, now Callum, Callum, in there, mate. All right. All right, Callum, congratulations. Two and oh. Milky Bar Kid is strong and tough, and only the best is good enough. The creamiest cream, the whitest bar, the good taste that's in Milky Bar. Excellent performance. Excellent performance. You brought ahead of a crowd with you today as well. I have. Big up Hudson, Red Row, Broom Hill, and Amble, Red Row Brick Club, Toxin Social Club, coming out in force. Um, yeah, all in the Milky Bar Army. Congratulations. Well done. Excellent performance. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, the action continues. About number four from your car this evening. Please welcome to the ring, Mikhailo Sartner. And here's your home this evening. Please welcome to the ring, Anthony Osby! Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a tough work and only six rounds in the welterweight division. It will feature the man to my right, making his 33rd professional appearance, weighing 10 stone 13 pounds from London via Ukraine. Ladies and gentlemen, Mikhailo Zafdor. And his opponent this evening. The man facing him across the ring, making his ninth professional appearance, weighing 10 stone 10 pounds from Wall 10, time and rear, Anthony Hornsby! All right. This is six rounds. Keep your heads up, keep your boots up. Defend yourselves in all times, or be like once in all times. Touch your This is on second or first six rounder. Ant was a uh, former stable mate of mine when we were both down at uh, Morton with Dean Preston. Um, good kid, tidy, really tidy, got lots of talent. Um, hasn't boxed in about a year, so um, yeah, good to get the ring rust off. Now he's trying to get the Walls End Boxing Academy with. Legendary trainer over there, Nicky Gears, good friend of mine. Um, he's had a hellish year, if you like. He had like a, a brain scan scare, which um, everything turned out to be okay. Um, he had a, a house fire. He lost a, um, a lot of stuff. He's been through the mill, hasn't he, for like the last year or so? Well, I think this, that's the last couple of years. I'm sure I am. Yeah, I'm sure that was when I was down World's End, the house fire and stuff. So yeah, mate, he's had a couple of bad years, so good on him to get get back at it, stay focused, you know, and get back on track, you know. So I'd see a dominating performance tonight over six rounds. He's in a game well with a tough kid. He's no, no, no joke, you know, he can't take anyone lightly in this game. No, you're absolutely correct. In fact, uh, Softer, so he's, um, Aaron Pete's pro debut dropped Aaron Pete. And he's a pro debut, so Ant is going to have uh, a guy in front of him who wants to win. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, this kid, you know, they, they, they take chances as well, you know. They lure you into a false sense of security, as I've said. And you might think, oh, I'm dominating this kid, I'm hurting him, and all of a sudden, he'll a shot will come out of nowhere, and it'll 
you know, hit you right on the right on the button. You've got to be prepared for this, you know. See, good shot there, good right hook from the uh, Ukrainian. Well, shout out to Ashley McDonald. She's here supporting Anne Thornsby. So, well done, Ashley. I said he's in, the, in with a very, very durable opponent. Good left hook there by Anthony. Thornsby. Oh, my God. This is <laughs> Matt McCallum, who's in their training camp, has been hey, giving dude. some Bishkov cheesecake. Listen, good job there's no cameras so no one can see. That's that's a that's a lettuce there and a bowl of fruit. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. I <laughs> said <coughs> uh, so this is uh, Anne Thornsby's first fight under Nikki Gitters. It was meant to be about a couple of months ago, but the show got pulled. So again, he's had rotten luck over like the last year or two, but now he's back. Everything's okay. New trainer, new gym, new everything. Good opening round for Anne Thornsby. This is a six round fight, so that's the end of round number one. Round two. Okay, round number two. And Thornsby versus Vicalio Softus. Got to be busy with that lead hand, you know. I'm just eating a bit of cheesecake if anybody hears me munching. <laughs> Drum it. <laughs> I'm there. Uh, it does look very, very, very tasty, that cheesecake. Torture. Got to watch out for those looping shots. Good shot. Go back on. Well, yes, but you got it. You're a good shot right on the top of his head. <laughs> that was a good backhand, then. It shows how tough this Ukrainian is. Again, another one. What, the, what this Ukrainian wants, so he wants him to stand there and he wants to have a war. You can tell. Ant's just got to, got to keep boxing and moving, boxing and moving because that's where he's going to have success, you know, that's where he's going to win the fight. And I don't care how many times he hits him on the top of the pack on. This Ukrainian's not going anywhere. As he looks hard as a coffin nail. <laughs> He's got a box and move. Shot. Nice. Oh, good left. Yeah. Good left hook. 
But he's just got to be careful because he's leaving himself open, you see, with these counters. He'll land a shot, but then he'll take one as well. Is he winding one up there, or is he just playing about there? <laughs> <laughs> Good shot, right on the, just above the belt. I feel like he's got to, he's got to double that up, double them body shots up, or hit him to the body and then come back the head, you know? Good second round there, Bayan. Good second round. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so now I've finished my now I've finished my cheesecake. I can commentate a little bit better now. So that's round number three, and Thornsby versus Michalio Softus. Good first two rounds by Anne Thornsby. Very elusive. Good left to the body. Good overhand right so far. He's got to stay switched on for the remaining. Four rounds. Oh, that's a good right by Anne Thornsby there. I wonder if he hurt him a little bit. Okay. That's very nice. He's sort of picking these shots a little bit uh, and the variation's better, you know? Catch this man off guard. He's very elusive at times, isn't he, Ant? Yeah, yeah, he moves really well. Moves really well. He's just got to be careful. There's a few times he's he's sort of, you know, he's rolled one way and then he's he's brought his head back in and like sort of dipped in, you know, and he's he's either just just missed out on getting caught with a shot or he's or he's took a, a little dig, you know. In with a very, very tough, durable opponent, though. Very, very tough. He's, he's probably probably murdered about fucking 50 Russians already, this game. <laughs> you, know I mean? you get these Eastern European lads who really are there, you know. They're, they're, they're hard, like, very hard, like. Exactly. They don't just come for a payday, they don't come to lie down. I said Anne Thornsby representing the Walls End Box Academy from Walls End himself, trained by Nicky Gittus, strength and conditioning coach John Slaughter. Although, shout out to John Slaughter, he's your, your SNC coach as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's, who, he's who's SNC coach? You, Anne Thornsby, and. He's not Anne's. He's not Anne's? No. I what he was. Good performance so far, like what I'm seeing, you know. Yeah, approaching the halfway mark now. Looks like he hurt him there, looks like he stung him. Lovely shot. Oh, good shot. Oh, no. That was a hell of a right. Lovely backhand to finish around there. Fantastic.
Seconds out, round four. Okay, round number four so far, Arvid. Three rounds to zero in favour of Anthorns, but you have it the same there, Matt? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, he's been the far busier fighter. He's, 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 um, he's moved really well. He's boxing really well, you know. So, um, three more rounds. It should be, should be a nice dominating performance. Got to be very careful, though. This kid's got power, you know, and he's just looking for that one shot. And he'd be, he'd be patient for six rounds until he gets that shot, you know. You've got to be switched on all the time. I totally agree with that one. So he's remaining two, two and a half rounds. Just keep doing what he's doing. Hit, don't get hit. Again, shout out to Ashley McDonald. Big supporter of Anne Thornsby. Oh, good shot by Anth again. Anthony's a very, very confident fighter, though, isn't he? He's very confident. You can see it. Yeah, well, you, you, you've got to be, you know? Or, you, otherwise, you get found out. You, you've got to show confidence. You've got to believe in your own ability to, uh, to, to go far in this sport, you know? Now, you've been with um, Ant for quite some time. You've known him for a long, old time. Do you see any differences with him? under the tutelage of Nicky Gittes? Um, well, the, the last fight I watched um, was actually here. That was just when everything was kicking off again after COVID. 2021, it was about two years ago. And he, he boxed Jordan Ellison over four rounds. You know, and Jordan Ellison's a very experienced kid. Maybe he was a little bit too soon, but I liked his ambition, you know. But but he looks... He looks uh, he looks like he's a little bit calmer. He's not rushing. He's not getting frustrated. I feel Anthony like used to get a bit frustrated if he felt like the fight wasn't going his way. You know, he, he looks a lot more level-headed, which which is uh, good to see. You know. It can be very very elusive at times. Oh, another good, good straight right from Man Thornsby there. Coming to the end of round number four. Two more rounds to go. This is a six-round fight. Coming to the end of four. Second round five. Round number five, Ann Thornsby versus Mikhailo Softus. Hey, welcome, Ashley. I appreciate your support. If anybody's new here, please hit a subscribe button. If you're subscribed, you can drop comments in the comment section. I know we're having a bit of competition tonight, obviously with Sky Sports and DAZN, so I appreciate everybody who's popped in now. Fuck them, this is a place to be. I totally agree with you. <laughs> so round number five, this is six rounds. Round number five. Oh, he caught one there.
Wasn't Anne Thornsby training with uh, Glenn McCrory at one point, wasn't he? I think so, yeah. I think um, might have been his first trainer. I think so, yeah. First or second trainer. Softus is making a bit of a fight of it now. Ant is well supported. You can hear the crowd. I said representing Wall's End and Wall's End Boxing Academy. Train with Nikki Kiddus. Of course, trains the likes of Kerry Haley, Gosh. Jordan Barker Porter, Lawrence Osueki, Rob Ismay, and many others. I don't miss anybody out. I apologize if I did. Gosh. Come on, up. Uh, the next fight is Ali Shah. So this is six rounds. This is in the welterweight division. Anne Thornsby versus Mikhailo Softus. Raymond Piper, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, here we go, end of round number five, coming up. One more round coming up next. Oh, Softus finishing the round strong there. All right, on, six and final round. Six and final round. <clears throat> so far, I have it. Personally, I have it. Five zero to Anne Thornsby. Although Softus finished round number five very, very well. I think Anne may have got a little bit complacent there with the hands down. Took a couple of uh, needless shots but still done enough to win the round. Round number six, final round. How are you? S.I. Evans, Ashley McDonald, Laura Walton, Sam Ali, Big Boys Boxing and everybody else, I appreciate you popping in. If you're not subscribed, please do show. I said this is the, the sixth and final round. Next up will be Ali Shah. Get out there. Put your gloves up. Softus was throwing that lever then. But Anth just seemed very comfortable in the corner, just evading the shots. Oh, took one there. Oh, getting covered in sweat here. I mean, Anth must be feeling quite comfortable to go back into the same corner and just Try and evade the shots there. Yeah, you know, he's obviously very confident. He's, you know, he's, he's dominated the fight. 
but also you could say, well, is he getting a little bit tired? Switching off slightly. You know, we see Nick Bolligan for doing that just before this round, this final round. All it takes is one shot, you know, like if you're in the corner like that. And this comes with experience as well. The kid's trying to pepper you, grab a hold of him, stop him front shot, you know, and reset. All he's going to do now is just going to, you know, win this round and hear that bell go. And he's, you know, he's, he's got another win. Very good performance so far. I have it 5 0 to Ann Thornsby. But arguably, you could say maybe he's losing this round. Yeah, I mean. But it doesn't matter. I mean, if you're 5 0 up, I, I, it doesn't I do, matter. I, 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 I still think he's done he's done more work, you know. Yeah. Even even if he is. the ref might he's, he's picked it up, hasn't he? The Ukrainians picked it up this round. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, what a contest. Once again, let's give these two fighters a huge round of applause. And we've got to wrap this up by Jill Willer with a score of 59.256. And the lead! Get up! Let's grab a quick interview with Anne Thornsby. So grab a quick interview. Excellent performance there. Excellent performance. Well done. Six rounds. Six rounds to zero. Thank you so much. Just got to be back in. Got to get the ring rust off. Get the momentum started. Did you feel different now you with Nicky Gillis? A million percent. I know I feel it a little bit in the last round. I got a bit excited in that, but after a year out of the ring, I felt I, I felt I just felt in for the first five. Last round started to fade, but got the job done. You know what I mean? Actually, um, I was doing some uh, commentary there with uh, your old stable mate in uh, Matt McCallum, and he's saying that uh, you must feel very comfortable to lay against this particular corner here and just evade the shot. I, I, I felt, I felt um, oh, he caught, he got a few, he got a few good shots through, but I felt a lot of them went winging past us. You know what I mean? But so. I, the confidence comes with the work that we'll put in the gym. Well, a win is a win. Congratulations, domination. Well done, mate. I mean, thank you very much, mate. I appreciate everyone who's bought tickets, sponsors, family, friends. I love you all. Thank you so much. Come on. Big future. Ladies and gentlemen, the action continues. That number five, for your car this evening, please welcome to the ring, Casey Bradner.
Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest will be sponsored by Spennymore Sports and it will be four rounds in the welterweight division and it will feature the man to my right making his 14th professional appearance weighing 10 stones, 7 pounds from Harwich in Essex, Casey Bradner and his opponent this evening Undefeated, making his second professional appearance. Weight ten stone, two pounds from Blackburn. Ali Shah. Yeah, well, keep your heads up, keep your punches up, keep it clean. Be my hands at all times and protect yourself at all times. Okay, so this is Ali Syed Shah. Alongside me is Ali Shah Stable, mate, and the super middleweight Northern Area champion, Adam Heppel. Hey, how are you doing? All right, mate. So Women's Academy, trained by Jordan Williams. What's Ali like? Oh, he's mustard. He is. He's uh, he's such a talent. He's he's game. He trains hard. He's uh, I think he'll go, he could go all the way. Um, I'd say there. He's such a talented kid. He's only he's only, he's only 21, I think. Just... You can hear that crowd. He's brought a good crowd with him. Yeah, the very, very popular family in the North East. Um, it's hard to think in here, it's so loud. <laughs> he, can, he can do it all, Ali. He can have a scrap, he can box. He can box going forward, he can box going back. He's, uh, uh, he's, he's the real deal. I mean, were you guys training with uh, Jordan Williams at the uh, Twins Academy? It's a very, very good stable of fighters you lot got, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, the place is bouncing. Um, everybody just bounces off each other, so to speak. Um, you got me, Kai, uh, Ali, um, Aaron, Dan. Um, I don't think I've missed anyone out there, but I, we're flying at the minute. We're, we are, we're flying. And like I say, the, the atmosphere in the gyms, it's electric, like it's bouncing. So, I uh, good things, good things to come. I hope. Now, I said to Jordan before that uh, it seems that he's got a gym full of good ticket sellers. All of you can sell tickets, okay? Like Daryl Sharp and all, all of you always sell good tickets. Yeah, I think we're just a gym full of good, good lads. Um, no bullies in the gym. Everybody's, everybody's good lads, and um, that's what people like. They don't like. Bullies and uh, people who were just people who think they're better than they are, which is down to earth, normal people. Um, so, I what's Bom A mean? Kill him. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, I think it was the, the rumble in the jungle. Um, Muhammad Ali's fans was, was singing Ali from my ear, and Ali kill him. I think it is. That's right, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, George Foreman. 
Okay, so K Casey Bradnam getting a bit of a telling off by the referee there and just getting a point deducted for holding. The Southport stars of Ali Shah. He switches Southport or Orthodox. He does it in the gym. He does it. He does it in the gym. He does it on the parties. Good, good to watch. Okay, so round number two, Ali Shah versus Casey Bradnam. He's brought a very, very good crowd with him. Casey Bradnam has been deducted a point already for holding. And as Adam quite rightly pointed out, Ali to be careful not to get sucked into the kind of fight that Casey Bradnam wants. Ali just needs to stick to his own game plan. I'm sure Jordan, his trainer, would have told him that. He's looking very comfortable though, isn't he, Adam? He is, yeah. Nice, calm, composed. Cutting the ring off, he's not following him around. He's, uh, no, he's, he's doing well. Do you get nervous for your stable mates? I do, I. I was, um, I was more nervous in there than I was for my last fight, I think. <laughs> anyway, speaking of your fights, you are the super middleweight northern area champion, but you're gunning for the British. <laughs> Very good shot there by Ali. Very good shot. He's hurt, Ali. He's hurt, Ali. That was a good shot there. He's wanted to grab hold of him. Yeah, he's hurt him there. He wants to jump on him here, I think. <laughs> Need to stay composed there. Maybe he could get a stoppage, but shouldn't. Certainly not go looking for it. If it's there, it's there. So when you fight again, Adam? Yeah, uh, we were hoping for the 9th of December on uh, Job's dinner show. Um, but unfortunately, my opponent that I was that was penciled in um, was pulled out. So I was just trying on trying to get a, a new opponent. Um, it was for a British title eliminator. Um, so it's just with the boxing board now, I think. Um, trying to get someone else clear for it. So just gotta just gotta stay switched on and stay stay in the gym, and um, I'm sure something will come up. It'd be fantastic to have um, another British champion up here in the northeast, and of course you represent in Sutherland and your neck of the woods. Yeah, I yeah. Uh, I mean that was me. That was me. Call from the start to to be a British champion, um, and to fight in a British eliminator in my fifth fight it's, it's mental like but these are the fights I want I want I want to fight the best and I'm not I'm not a young uh, oh Ali's going for it here yeah, I'm, I'm not a young lad I'm, I'm 30 year old so I just want to try and push on and uh, I get these hard fights and see, see where I can go this crowd is loud, real loud, very passionate.
Round three. Round number three. Four round fight in the welterweight division. Ali Shah versus Casey Bradnam. I have it two rounds to zero for Ali Shah. Of course, in round number one, Casey Bradnam got a point deducted for holding. So he's, for me, I've got Ali ahead by three points going into round number three. He's looking good, Ali, here. Very composed, nice fence. Um, going to the head, going to the body. He's, he's looking really, really good, here, Ali. Oh, there we go. He's stalking him now. Stalking him now. Hello, sports. Kai Richmond and Co. Hope you're well. You can see the right, uh, the right side of uh, Casey Bradham's back looking quite bruised already. Yeah, he's uh, he's really whipping them body shots in, Ali. So every time he goes there, he's hurting them as well. The old liver shots, they're the worst. It's so good at that. You watch it, I'd say him when he's sparring with Kai and the lads at the gym, leaning in and getting them to throw that shot and slipping back and counting with the right, with the right hand. He's, he's so good at that, Ali. Does Ali got black and white on because he's a Newcastle fan or is this just a Muhammad Ali short thing? I think it's the Muhammad Ali. I don't think he's interested in football. Like. It's just the, uh, the Muhammad Ali, uh, Ali, Bumbai, uh, all that, all that crap. Very, very busy fighter, very tidy, very aggressive when he needs to be. Very confident, just stalking him. Looking, looking, there we go. Set them up, Ali. Set them up. It's a, it's a joy to watch when he's flown like this. I mean, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Very, very confident. Very confident. Just needs, to get, just needs to stay switched on because if he gets caught in there, it'll hurt. <laughs> Let's hope he don't. Coming up to the end of round number three. This is a four-round fight, so one more round to go. Dominant performance by Ali Shah. Right, fourth and final round. I've just got word that Joe Laws, the Benwell Bomber, our pal who trains at the Jobs Boxing Gym, who of course are promoting this show, has just defeated Michael Hennessy in a weight division that Joe Laws had absolutely no right being at. So well done to the Benwell Bomber, Joe Laws. So what's your overall review of uh, Ali's performance coming in halfway point of round number four? Yeah, very good. Calm, composed, doing everything that I've been seeing him and Jordan do in the gym. Um, I'm sure Jordan will be very, very impressed. He'll be over the moon. I am anyway. And then what's your reaction to Joe Laws pulling off an upset down there at middleweight as well? Hats off to him. Hats off to him. Um, 
12 days notice he's got a good set of balls on him like he's uh, he's gone down there and he's upset the apple cart hats off to the kid well done Lawsy the Benwell bomber So come into the the final minute or so of round number four. It looks like Jordan Williams and Twins Academy. That would be three wins out of three, Adam. Yeah, um, like I said before, we've got a hell of a stable. Um, one of the best coaches in the in the, not just the northeast, I believe, in the country. A Twenty-five year old. I mean, what more do you want? Absolutely. Hey, Paul V33, he's a channel member right there. Big up to you, Paul V33. Uh, Paul Collinson and fought on the fight beforehand. He won a decision over six rounds. So congratulations to Anne Thornsby. Now we come into the final stages of round number four, fourth and final round. There's like a alley win, especially as uh, Casey Bradham got a point deducted in round number one for holding. And Ali's been dominant ever since, so very, very comfortable win for Ali Shah. And only his second professional fight. TJ McKee, how you doing? Not bad, yourself? Very well, thank you very much. You're putting a lot of, a lot of work for all the production of this show, mate. Yeah, I mean, it's going brilliant. Uh, you know, everyone seems to be happy. We've had some good comments, so it's very good. Well, we've got about a 10, 15 minute interval coming up, which I shall mute that one because I'm sure there's going to be loads of music and everything popping up. It'll be 10, 15 minutes while they do some charity auctions. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, as the referee brings the fighters together, can we have a huge round of applause? And we go into the referee scorecards. Your winner with a score of 40 points to 35, Ali! Let's do a quick interview with Ali Shah. Right, I'm just going to do a quick interview with Ali Shah. Help an old man up. <laughs> All right, Ali, congratulations. Two and all, very dominant performance. How do you feel? I feel good. The support's mad, as you can see. Everyone's screaming their name out of good support. Thank everyone who bought a ticket. Shout out to all the sponsors. Jordan, put to work in. We've been putting the work in the past seven months. Unfortunately, I've met a fight in July on that summer show here. But due to injuries, I missed it, but it's nice to be back under, get the rounds in. Well, you were the third fight of the night under your trainer, Jordan Williams, representing the uh, 
Twins Academy. You brought a hell of a show, a hell of a crowd with you tonight as well. Yeah, the, I've got a power crowd. The crowd's good. They follow me everywhere I go, so I'm grateful for that. Some people are struggling to sell tickets. Shout out to the boys as well, Aaron and Dan. They were good performances. You know what I mean? Okay, so we go home and celebrate now? Yeah, go get some food. Go see my mum. Chill out. All right, Ali Shah, congratulations. 2-0, oh, my man. I'll see you a lot next year. Anybody want an Anthony Joshua signed love? All right, so I'm gonna you guys want a free mute the sound. Got to be about a 10 15 minute interval. Terrible.
keeps the action will continue. If you'd like to retake your seats, the boxing will start in just a few moments' time. Thank you. Six on your car this evening. Please welcome to the room, Serge. <laughs> And his opponent this evening, please welcome to the ring, Robert Dalton! Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is sponsored by Toughwear and will be six rounds in the middleweight division and it will feature the man to my right making his 65th professional appearance weighing in at 11 stone, 5 pounds from Sheffield, Serge and Bongo! And his opponent this evening, the man facing him across the ring with five fights, five victories, making his sixth professional appearance, weighing 11 stone, four pounds, from Rekha, Bobby Dalton! What's your law in board, what's your push on the back of the head? Keep it clean. Take yourselves on the chance into the hunt all the time. Shut you up, let's do it, back to your board. Seconds out, round one. Okay, so fight number six, Bobby Dalton versus Sergio Ambomo. Bobby Dalton, 5-0, and oh, trains with Craig Carney alongside the likes of Troy Williamson. Alongside me, got the legend himself, Thomas Patrick Ward. Good to see you, my man. Good to see you too. Um, fantastic turnout here tonight at the Vet Meadows. And uh, some great fights has been on already. 
Bobby Dalton there, he's coming along, he's uh, progressing very well. Uh, like you said, he's got a good coach in his corner, Craig Carney. Puts the time of working with the lads as a pro and as an amateur. He's got Troy Williams, like you mentioned. You know, so I'm um, looking forward to seeing how he gets on here. He started very well. So how important are these local shows that uh, Phil Jeffries and Matty Jobs and that put on? They're very important for the, the likes of now that the, the, they're coming up through the ranks because I've said it for many, many years, a lot of the Northeast fights, fighters get very overlooked and, uh, you know, people just don't really want to fight them because we give it everything. You know, we've got some great talent there and nobody wants to, nobody wants to fight us. So uh, we need shows, like they said, to progress the lads and get them to title, get them in a position for titles and then people have no choice to fight them. I said, so he's a representing red car, which is in the county of Durham, I believe, isn't it, near Sunderland? Yeah, no, it's uh, Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough, Stockton way. Um, yeah, but he's, like I said, he's uh, he's looking very sharp here in the first round, penetrating the guard. I'd like to see him go to the body a little bit more because um, he's got a nice tight and high guard there. So see what Bobby can do. Um, a little few more tricks, a little few more feints. Now, Sergio Bomo is a former Olympian. He uh, turned to uh, journeyman. Very, very tough, durable man. In fact, I've only ever seen him stop once. That was by Alex Farrell. That was probably about a year and a half ago. Yeah, that's that's correct. I think I was I think I was there that show anyway. And, uh, but that's a good fighter. And Alex as well. He's very sharp. He's very quick. He's very clever. Um, he's progressing very well. I'd like to see him out next again. Um, but like I said, at the minute, Bobby's doing, doing very well. He's boxing very nice. He's not giving nothing away. He's not loading up on his punches, he's leaving them flow, so he's doing really well at the minute. He's a very tidy boxer, um, much like uh, Troy Williamson. They are very methodical in what they do. Definitely, I mean, all the fundamentals is, is uh, right. But like I said, that comes from there. Obviously, the lad, lad's not at the box, but you've got Craig, he works with him day in, day out. and uh, He's a very strict coach, and you know, he knows what he's on about, and he's got the lads um, doing the right job. And here we are approaching the end of round number one, dominant performance, opening round four, Bobby Dalton from Redcar. Round number two. Second round two. Right, so Tommy, it's been a while since you fought. I know that uh, you've been hoping to be out again by now, but uh, we're still waiting for a fight date for you. Yeah, still waiting for a fight date. It's been um, a very frustrating year for me. Um, supposed to fight uh, a couple of times this year, but things just fell through. Um, so yeah, we're still we're still training. We're still we're ready to go. I just hope that the big fights come and. We can, we can get there, you know, we're willing to fight anybody, so just hopefully the right fights come along. Now, now, you had like a little bit of a setback in the last one, but that certainly hasn't deterred you from the ultimate goal of becoming world champion. Most certainly not, no. I mean, uh, obviously last time out I, I, I got beat, um, he's a very good fighter. I do believe he win, will win the world title. But um, like myself, my ambition hasn't changed, to be honest. I do believe if uh, a couple of things were maybe different, the fight might have been different, but... I would like one or two more fights and hopefully a rematch. So if we can get that on, that would be, be my ideal way of looking at it. But there's plenty of good fights out there for me in the world um, stage. And them's the ones I'm looking to do, to be honest. I'm willing to travel anywhere or they can come to me. I'm, I'm absolutely easy. Always have been, always will be. Just want to fight. What about if um, Lee Wood and Josh Warrington, if they don't rematch, what about you versus Josh Warrington? Yeah, that's a fantastic fight. Um, 
me and Josh know each other very well, plenty around sparring with each other throughout the years as he was going through the ranks himself, as I was just coming up through the ranks. Um, yeah, that would be a great fight as well. Uh, I think Lee Wood is m moving up, obviously, because he vacated his title. Um, but, I mean, like, that kind of fight, say, that's the ones you want, isn't it? I mean, it's a great British tear-up. Uh, all the fans will be interested in seeing and great fights for me, you know, and uh, I believe I'll win them. They you know them kind of fights that you want as well, definitely. I mean, a couple of years ago, when you were with uh, Frank Warren, you defeated uh, Jazza Dickinson for the uh, British title, didn't you? Yeah, I beat uh, Jazza Dickinson and again, another good British British fighter who's won the IBO world title. He's recently been been beat, but um, you know, as well, uh, another good fighter. But good will keep on um, keep on adding. I mean, I don't know. I think he's got the rematch clause with that one. Um, I mean, if that doesn't happen, maybe the rematch between me and him could happen. Um, or the, the guy who beat him, like, would fight him. That would be a great fight. And uh, like I said, it's not, there's, there's loads of good fights out there for me. Loads of good potential fights, so I just hope we can get them. And this one's turned into a bit of an interesting fight. We've got, um, sorry, what's the guy's name again? Sergio and Bobby Sir, Sergio and, and Bobby Dalton. He's starting to leave his hands go a bit. He's caught Bobby with a few. Um, so he's making Bobby think a little bit here. And... Uh, it's turned into a good little fight. These are the kind of fights that someone like Bobby needs, though, isn't it? He needs somebody who's going to uh, come forward. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I think this is well, this is his sixth fight now, so his first four that I have seen, he's won them um, quite easily. Uh, he's winning this fight, but um, he is giving it a go. Three. All right, round number three of Bobby Dalton of Red Car versus Sergio and Balmo. Well, up next will be Nathan Forrest taking on Pons Alexandra. Nathan Forrest, a stable mate of yours? Yeah, stable mate of mine. Uh, trains with me every day. Um, again, he's progressing his career nicely. Um, I believe he was scheduled to fight somebody else tonight, but it never went through, so Pons Alexandra has stepped in. Um, but I just hope he can showcase some skills. I mean, Fonz Alexander, we all know what he's about, but I'd like to see some of the things that he's been working on in the gym come out there, in there tonight. Now, now, as you were saying there in the um, in the interval, that's a, that's a Bobby, he's learning a lot in this fight, probably more than he has in any other fight, but Serge is actually throwing back. Yeah, that's what I mean. Serge has come here, like, you know, he, he comes in, he's, he's, he's having a go at, at times, you know, he's letting Bobby know that he's in there, that he's not a mug, um, his last, like I said, his last five fights, I think he's won quite comfortable. He's boxing very nice at the minute and he is winning. But the odd one, he is getting through, he's getting caught, so it's making him think, you know, he can't switch off and it's, it's not going to be such of an easy night that it has been. But you need these fights to take you through. And like, as you can see here, great response oh. from Bobby, who's, um, you know, taking the fight to him now. So this is what we want to see. We don't want to see him play about here. There, there, just a little, little reminder there. Let him know that he's still there. He's, he's, he's going to throw back, so he needs to stay switched on, Bobby. No, I'm pretty sure Sergio Bromo, he drives wearing his uh, wraps. You know, he turns up as you walk into the arena, wraps already on, even before the weigh-in. <laughs> he's ready to fight. He's ready to fight. He's here to do his job. Um, but like I said, look, you can see it there. He's, uh, he's leaving his hands go at, at times, you know. He's looking for that big shot, so Bobby's got to be careful. Keep that left hand up a little bit because the overhand right is coming in and uh, just be switched on to it. Now, with you being from the North East, it's a North East show. When you're in that ring, how important is this crowd? Because they're, they're always loud and, of course, they're full of instructions themselves. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I think the last time I boxed uh, myself in the Red Meadows was uh, in May, it was a year ago, December, for Padilla. Yeah. And uh, the crowd at that time was 
was absolutely unbelievable. And every round went past, you could hit, you just hear it. It, it gives you that that burst, you know. It gives you a new a new burst of life, and it looked like you wanna go that extra mile, and you're putting on. You hear the roar of the crowd, makes you wanna go again. So the crowd's very important, you know. And he's got a good uh, fan base behind him here, shouting TSA. So he's uh, he should spur him on. And Bobby's stablemate, Troy Williamson, he's in a very, very tough fight against a tough Irishman next. He certainly is, yeah. Um, but, you know, I like Troy. I think he's, uh, again, his fundamentals is great. Uh, he's very tough. Round four. Okay, so here we are into round number four. This is a six-round fight in the middleweight division. Bobby Dalton is a super welterweight, but because it's same-day weigh-in, he's fighting at middleweight. How many same-day weigh-ins have you done, Tommy? Um, I've done a few early on in my career, but but not many, to be fair. Uh, well, I've had, I've had about 35 fights, I think. Maybe eight, possibly ten at the most. Uh, most of my fights have been... Uh, day before, because that was because my brother Martin was always fighting on the probably same card. He was always fighting for titles and etc. So when he was weighing in, it made sense for me to win. And you don't mind being the away fighter as well. It's like, you no, know, you've been overseas and fought before as well, haven't you? Yeah, most certainly. I mean, uh, the opportunity is there. You've got to take it. I mean, there's another Northeast fight tonight. Joe Laws has just pulled off a, oh. a unexpected win that nobody expected him to win, but. You know, he took his chances in the away corner, and that's what happens. Live on Sky Sports, he's done himself very proud. This is turning into a very, very tough fight for both of them, really. Yes, definitely. Like I said, uh, Bobby, I like to see him move his feet a little bit more. Keep switched on, keep tagging him and moving. Um, he's, he's getting caught with the odd the odd overhand there, because you can see he's giving him a go, because, you know, he's, he's getting success. If he wasn't getting success, he might have been in the shell a little bit more, but the more success he's getting and he's going to the body, you know, he's got to keep on throwing. If, if the target's there, he's going to hit it. You can see see the, the weight difference really here. Yeah, this is not Bobby's normal weight. Obviously, he got weighted on the, on the day and you can see he's, uh, he's up against a, a, a lump bigger opponent. And uh, the shots are just bouncing off, off him, really. So that's why now, as he's... I think the last two rounds will be a bit interesting because the more pressure he comes on, he's starting to land to the body a bit more. But like I said, I'd like to see Bobby just box, get on his bike a little bit, box and move, make a miss, and uh, not get tied up in situations where he's getting tied up now. Well, it must be horrible when you're throwing everything at your opponent, like Bobby is here, and the guy just keeps coming forward. It's like it's not affecting him. The thing is, it's all about the mind. See, when the punches, when he keeps walking forward and not affecting them, you've got to make a miss. You've got to make a miss, and then that that de deteriorates them. When they're not hitting nothing mentally in their own self, it gets to them, and they, like I said, they sort of go in the shell a little bit more. Because when you can't physically hurt them, you've got to hurt the mind. You've got to offset them. Make them hit for there. Well, I think Bobby's winning this round, though. Oh, most certainly, yeah. I think, yeah, like I said, I think Bobby's won, I'd say, every round. Uh, but they have been, the last two have been a bit competitive. Like I said, he's getting caught with a, with a few. But, um, yeah, definitely Bobby's still in control.
Okay, so round five, Bobby Dolan versus Sergio Ambomo. This is a six round fight, so two rounds to go. We're just saying there, Tommy, that. Uh, oh, oh, oh. That Sergio Ambomo. That one got through with Bobby. Uh, we were just saying about his left hand being a bit low. He's been caught with that other hand right there a couple of times tonight. I'd like simply that up a little bit and then, um, you know, like I said, box, box and move. You can see he's up against a bigger guy who can punch. So, you know, you gotta, he's gotta, you gotta use his brain. And you could tell Craig Carney there was um, giving him a shit talent in, in the corner because I think he wants him to do, do the same. Because, you know, he, did, he doesn't want to fight this guy. He needs to box this guy. That's the thing sometimes is that uh, people look at, say, journeymen and forget that sometimes they need a win to keep their license and you could be that win they're looking at. 100%. I mean, when you're in there, if they, if they sense anything, um, if, they, if there's a crack in your arm and they sense it, they're going to go for it because, like you said, every now and again, they need a win. So, and if they can pull off a, a win against an unbeaten fighter, you know, that gives them even more because it's a, it's a good fight for the, for the next unbeaten fighter. This fight is definitely a bit of a war. You could say it's arguably the fight of the night if you're a neutral fan. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, it's, it's probably the most exciting one of the night, you know. Um, like I said, all the other ones, they've seen the uh, one side. One side of the play, the role, should I say. Um, you had Ali on 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 before. Um, his was a, was a good fight, and I think that was a learning fight for him as well. Um, so, but you know, definitely up to now, this has definitely been the fight of the night. And Bobby seems to hear, he seems to be pushing him back a little bit. He's landing some good shots here. Good shots to the body. Um, a little bit more of that we'd like to see. He, he might take an effect. Because he's definitely not getting no effect with the head. It's like hitting yeah. a brick wall. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, Bobby will learn more from this fight than he has all previous five fights combined. Oh, most certainly. Like I said, when you're in there and you're fighting the journey, man, and you're not getting hit back, well, you're only learning the trade, you're learning the environment, you're learning how to be in, in the professional ranks with the crowd. But, you know, when you're getting caught and, you get, and you're actually in a fight, it learns you that, obviously, learns you that bit more. And he, he is, um, he's catching them every now and again. So, it's, he definitely is going to learn more from this than he has any other fight he had. But it's what he needs to progress to the next level. And I'm sure he's at these kind of spots with Troy Williamson and Alex Farrell down there. Most definitely, yeah. I mean, uh, I bet they do. I bet they have some good, good old tear ups in there because you know, with Troy, you definitely get the tear up. Definitely. Right. End of the round. Second two, sixth so final round. Now, right, sixth and final round. It's been a very entertaining fight, has it, Tommy? It has been an entertaining fight, yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, Bobby's been boxing well, but you know he's been getting caught with these, um, these some of these big shots, and it's, like I said, it's making him think. He, he knows that he's in a fight now, and um, this is what, but this is what you want to see. You want to see, and then. Bobby rise to, to the challenge and taking over, which which he is. Like I said, he's still winning comfortable. I, I have winning win every round, but it's been competitive the rounds that he has been winning, which is, is what you want to see. Now you're very good friends with Tyson Fury. Yeah. Now he's going to be taking on um, Francis and Garnu next, but he's already signed to fight Usyk, which is a fight that we all want to see. Definitely, yeah. Obviously. The Tyson Fury and, and Nagano fighters, um, 
I'm going to say more of a showmanship because it's not really a fight, is it? How can you put in someone who's never had a professional boxing match in with the heavyweight champion of the world? It's, you know, and yes, he's an MMA fighter. Yes, he's one of the baddest men in MMA, but he's not doing MMA. If Tyson was going into MMA, into the octagon, might have been a different opinion. He's going into boxing. Tyson's home in the ring. So to me, he's got absolutely no chance whatsoever. So yes, the main fight we all want to see is Uzek v Tyson Fury. That is the fight. I do think Uzek gives Tyson a couple of problems, but Tyson's size, his ability, I think after six, Tyson throws him down on a late stoppage for me. Now we're coming to the closing stages of round number six for Bobby Dalton versus Sergio Mbamo. And we can see here why Sergio Mbamo gets brought back to these kind of shows a lot, because he gives them a hell of a test. 100%. Like I said, he keeps uh, he keeps leaving them go, keeps catching them, making sure that, there, there we go, there. That one never caught a flush, that was on the, on the shoulder, but it's making Bobby think, you know what I mean? If he's not if he's not moving all that gas on up, you know, that big right hand's coming and it's going to hurt. You can see he packs power, you know, he's tough, he's strong, he's durable. You know, I, I didn't expect Bobby to stop him, to be honest. Um, especially getting rid of another day, like I said, he, he is a big of a, a bigger guy. You can see that in the ring. Um, but, you know, Bobby's boxing, he is boxing nice. And I like to say, it's a good learn fight for him tonight. This is where Bobby doesn't want to be. He's stuck there on the ropes, you know, taking a few heavy ones. You know, he doesn't want to be lying on the ropes. Just keep, keep, keep moving. As long as he's moving, it's the way he wants to be. So he's firing back there. Nice four punch combination, but you know, nothing really sort of landing more, more on the gloves. If he just took his time a little bit more, picked his shots, um, be a little bit better. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, how about a huge round of applause? What a sick round of that was. Hell of a fight. Hell of a fight. And the young referee scorecards, your winner with a score of 60 points to 54. Bobby! Well done, Bobby. Bobby, congratulations. Six rounds. That was a hell of a fight. Yeah, good fight. Tough, tough bloke, isn't he? Excellent, Mimbo. Like I said, I always say I can fight and I can box, and I showed that I can box. So, I mean, effortlessly against an excellent man, he takes rounds with everyone. He's beating him every round, easy. Yeah, he can't be a few good shots, but he's going to be like that and switch it up. So I can do it. I mean, like a me, me and Thomas Patrick Ward were on commentary there saying that you probably learned more from this fight than you did your previous five. Yeah, well, it was a tough fight. I also, my third fight, I had a lad who came to win some Spaniard who 
uh, representing Spain at 75 kilos. So I've had two now, but that was tough, mate. That was a tough fight. That's what I need. That's what I need, mate. So, uh, you hoping to be back out again before the end of the year? See what happens, mate. I need a word to sit down with Phil Jeffries and see what's next, mate. So, uh, mate, I want... I'm good enough now. Maybe have a night round next. And then let's go, whatever. I need to work out way I'm doing all same day wins, the ones I'm on now, so I still need to work out with me, but yeah, good things to come. Yo, very, very good fight to watch. Again, congratulations. Well deserved, man. Thank you very much. Here's the part of this evening. Please welcome to the ring, Nathan Foray! The following contest will be sponsored by Troy Bar Mouthguards. It will be six rounds in the welterweight division and it will feature the man to my right. Making his 162nd professional appearance, ah, weighing 10 stone, wow. 8 pounds, from New York, Boston, the legend, Barnes Alexandra! And his opponent this evening, the man facing him across the ring. With five fights, five victories, one huge win by knockout, making his sixth professional appearance, weighing 10 stone, 7 pounds, from Bishop Auckland County, Durham, Nathan Moran! <laughs> All right, six round fight. Nathan oh. Forrest. Nathan Forrest versus Bonds Alexandra at welterweight six rounds. Thomas Patrick Ward, that's your stable mate right there. Yeah, Nathan's in there. He's looking good. Um, he's been coming along well in the gym. Like I said, Fonz Alexander, I think is a little replacement. He'd uh, had somebody else, but fight fell through. So, you know, Fonz is always up for a bit of a fight. <laughs> so he's in there now. But like I said, I'd like to see Nathan now um, do what he's been doing in the gym because he has been progressing well, learning. I'd like to see some of these moves there, uh, moves tonight. Now, I've spoken to Nathan on numerous occasions and he says that he wants the local rivalries he wants to fight the other northeast fighters in his division yeah he does yeah i mean that's the plan him and uh, neil fallon's got they're wanting to um progress but 
I mean, at the weight division, he's at the 10 stone, the 10 and a half stone. There's plenty of um, northeast fighters here um, that will make great derbies, you know. And there's more than just one or two. There's maybe five or six. So, you know, it's really pointless looking anywhere else when you've got them to deal with, to be fair. Now, in your stable, you've been around plenty of fighters like um, obviously Nathan here. Um, pretty like a Lewis Ritz and Glenn Foot and all those kind of ones. Do you get nervous watching your stalemates fight even more so than when you're fighting? Uh, I get nervous watching people on no fight, yeah, then um, especially my brother, to be honest, I'm glad he's retired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, because I mean, when you're fighting, you're in there now, you're, you're in full flow, you know, you're doing what you normally do, what you're used to doing. But yeah, when you're sitting outside, there's nothing you can do about it, it's not, uh, not very nice. I think there's a little cut over. Alexander's eye there on the on his right eye, I see. Um, and then said Nathan's boxing well. He's he's not rushing his work. He's picking his shots well. He's countering well there. That body shot left up was, was nice and nice tight guard there with Fon's um, Fon's attack. So you know he's boxing really nice here. I think um, the next fight might be and and Thornsby and, and Nathan Forrest. I think I think the plan on fighting the uh, Northern Area title, great fight, and you know we'll see if. Uh, See if that comes off. Now, in Nathan's previous performances, he's a very good boxer, but he's very heavy-handed as well, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. Um, I said he can box, but he, he, he can punch. He's a very strong fit lad. I mean, look, look at his physique. You can see it. He's, uh, you know, he's he's built strong, you know, and he's got got heavy hands on him. But you know, the heavy heavy punches needs to come just with the boxing. Like I said, his little counter there, the left hook to the body, the left, left hook to the head. Previously, before you know, you could see that Ventures did in the in the Fonz Alexander because it was a nice counter. But he, he's boxed nice at the minute. He's picking his punches. He's not rushing nothing. That was a little bit sloppy, but um, you know, oh, lovely left hook. Round two. Okay, so round number two. How would you summarise Nathan's first round there? Yeah, he boxed nice. Um, like I said, he's he's taking his time. He's picking his punches. A few counters was very nice. The left hook at the end and left hook the body, left hook the head as Fonz was coming for his attack. So, you know, he's uh, he's countering nice. And obviously when he's leading off as well, you can see he's, he's nice and tight there. He's not really giving much away. Um, you know, he's picking his punches as well. So... Yeah, he's boxing, he's boxing nice at the minute. He's, uh, good work, good work from him. Is Nathan one of them uh, guys that you know that you feel could go on to lift titles at some point? The way he's been progressing, you know, when Nathan first came to the gym, uh, I found I'll tell you, I thought, well, it's, it needs a lot of work, but he was very quick at coming on. So he learned very quick and he's come along a long way since, since turning pro. Like I said, he's only had five fights since he's six, but... Um, I think after this one, he'll be done with the, the likes of your Fonz and, and the so-called journeyman that, that he's been facing. Um, and like I said, I think they'd be like Anne Thornsby or there's plenty of North East guys out there for him. So he'll, um, one of them may be next for Northern Area title. I'd we'll like to see him in. And again, I think someone who's going to come to fight as well, you'll see about Nathan Forrest as well. So, but I mean, at the minute, he's boxing nice. He's picking his punches. That was a nice little move there. The pull down of the glove in the right hand, you know. See, a lot of things that guy's been picking up in the gym, so, you know, yeah, at least he's, at least he's doing them. Oh, he's kept doing nice, then. Well, don't you find, though, that when you fight in Germany, it's quite difficult when they're there to survive. As you move up and you find opponents who come forward, there's more openings for you. Most definitely, and I think that's what I mean. You know, that's where you'll probably see the better Nathan, because these shots here, you know, Fonz is used to taking these, and that probably off heavier guys as well. 
but when you've got someone coming to fight, I think it'll take effect, and I think you've probably seen Nathan maybe stopping a few. Yeah, definitely a cut of the, the left eye. It only looks a small one, but uh, sorry, right eye of uh, Fonz, but yeah. it um, looks like a little nick there. Hope it's not too bad because he probably has another fight schedule next week. Did I hear the master of ceremonies right? Was it like 160 fights or something? 165 or something, yeah. He's, uh, <laughs> he's had quite a few, hasn't he? Oh, he took one back so there. He took one back there. That's why he's got to be careful. When, he, when he's dishing it out, you've always got to remember these, you know, like these gentlemen, they will fire back. So as he's dishing out there, I like to see him just take a little step away and make funds miss with them kind of shots. And again, it will demoralize him, you know? Is there any danger of Martin making a comeback? No, he's fat and happy and he's retired. <laughs> no, that was a beautiful combination. See, there we go. He takes that step off. That was a beautiful combination there from Nathan. Uh, taking him to the head, taking him to the body, and then, then, then taking that little step back so Fonz couldn't counter. So that's what you want to see there. He's um, boxing really nice. Round three. Okay, so round number three this is a six round fight in the welterweight division. Very solid performance, though, so far, Tommy. Yeah, so far. I mean, it's, oh, nice shot there from Nathan. Um, very solid performance so far, winning the first two rounds. But you can see what he's about. He's picking his punches, he's not rushing no work. Um, he's catching funds nice. I mean, we all know what funds is about, but. You know he's doing what he's what he's supposed to do and he's looking well doing it as well so you know he's, he's boxing very nice nathan at the minute lovely job lovely job there you know he's just knocking funds back there doubling up then as he got him to the corner you know nice body shot but also got caught with the left hook but you know nice body shot there from from nathan you can see now he's just you know he's going to work a little bit and he's he's taking them few more risks because i don't think he feels like funds probably you know any any sort of danger with them their shots i mean you can see francis is loading up there with the with the punches but nothing really is getting through um and he's picking a few nice shots to the body again just to slow him down because i think he's got more chance maybe even dropping them or stopping them to the body than the head like i said these here the 165 fights i mean how many times has Fonz been stopped uh, very very few i thought so you know if any you got more chance of probably going to the body but he doesn't need to and he's boxing nice the jab's working nice his defense is quite nice, you know. There, he's picking his punches nice. He's going to the body, you know, tying up funds there. He's doing doing really well. Yeah, yeah. He's, Nathan's boxing nice here. Now, Adam Cole comes to your gym quite a bit. Does uh, him and Nathan spar a bit? Adam does. Yeah, he spars with Nathan. He spars with myself. Um, Neil obviously um, helps out when he can. Uh, very good fighter. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's again, it's good spars. Adam's. In his career, he's a little bit further, obviously, on than, than Nathan. But um, you know, Nathan's learning off him as well. And he's lovely oh. shot there from Nathan. Lovely left hook and a backhand, and another one. But you know, there's Fonz with the showmanship, hands down. Met him miss a few times there, uh, a cracking shot. But no, I mean the spars is good. And like I said, he's they're learning all the time. They're coming on. So Nathan just needs to take his time there now. That that was a beautiful shot and it'll come again. You know, he's 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 in control of this fight, he's winning easy, he just needs to um keep doing what he's doing. And there we go with Fonz, just a little reminder there, nice left hook from him. To just to say that I'm here, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you. Don't get too cocky. There we go again from Fonz, you know, just loading up with that there big right just there. Just reminding Nathan on that. 
you're going to mess about, I'm going to, I'm going to crack you. Yeah, nice one too again from Fonz. It's a little bit sloppy there from Nathan. You know, his concentration, I think, has switched off a bit because he's had some, some good rounds. He's looking for that left hook now where he should just leave a cup. But very nice, boxing well. Okay, so here we go again. Nathan looking very, very good in this fight. Well in control, but obviously Fonz, he knows how to survive. He knows how to take the shots. He's a very durable guy. Yeah, 100%. I mean, Fonz, like you said, he's 165 fights, something or, or so on. So he's stopped very, very few times. Knows how to survive, knows how to put on the show. You know, keeps letting them go there just to let Nathan know that he's still there. But, you know... Nathan's boxing really well. He's boxing really nice at the minute. He's he's nice tight guard. He's punch shot selection. You know, I think everything from him. He's he's doing what he's been doing in the gym. Um, some nice 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 little tricks there, nice little punches there. So, you know, Nathan's boxing really really well. And I suppose it's all you can ask for him with an opponent like Fonz because, you know, I think if Fonz let tried to come and win, I think he would Nathan would hurt him and probably stop him. So. You know, I don't think he can do. He, every time Nathan catches him, it, I can't see a bit of effect there. And, you know, if Fonz opened up through a few more, I think he would. I think Nathan would stop him. But like you said, we knows how to survive. He's had 165 fights, so you know, he's. he's de I think he's definitely there for the for the six rounds. I mean, if Nathan does stop him, I think it's a very, very big statement to really to the to the division that the, in the northeast who's looking to fight Nathan. Not like Nathan. He's a uh... He's such a nice lad as well, but he just switches it on. As soon as that bell goes, he turns into Predator, doesn't he? Well, 100%. I mean, me and Neff has done a few rounds as well. And, uh, you know, when, when he's in there, he's in there. He's, he wants, Oh, that's a lovely, lovely shot from there. From there. I think that, that definitely uh, shook Fonz a little bit. There we go. He's firing back. Let him know that he's there. But I think he definitely felt that one. But no, um, yeah, he, when that bell goes, when he's in that ring, sparring, fighting, Nathan's there. You know, he's a lovely kid outside, outside the ring. You wouldn't wouldn't wish, wish to be a nicer person but you know when he's in there he's all about the fight game and um beautiful combination i think from nathan i think he's really um he's really starting to hurt funds which uh you know probably like we didn't really expect it but he's i think it's because he's taking his time he's doing what he's supposed to do he's shot selection and everything is, is fantastic tonight he's boxing really well but considering the amount of fights that he's had he seems very very cool and relaxed in the ring he doesn't just waste waste shots does he He's quite selective with it. Yeah, definitely. Well, obviously, I've known Nathan a long time, known for the amateurs, and he, and he was he was like that as amateur. The only thing was amateur was he's probably a little bit a bit too calm because you've only got three rounds. And a couple of times I told him that he's, he, he started very slow and he used to have a great third round. But you can do as a pro because obviously he's got longer rounds. But um, you know he's calm, he's cool. Oh, nice little trade there. Um, he's calm, he's cool. But you think, like I said, he's boxing well. He's a nice tight guard. Start selection there is really well.
Okay, round number five. This is a six round fight. For me, I've got uh, Nathan Forrest winning this one quite handily. After this fight, we've got Robbie Coleman, then Callum Walton, then the main event, Thomas the Hitman Hodgson. Yeah, uh, definitely it's been a good show up to now. There's, oh, that, I think yeah, Fonz fell out left up from uh, Nathan. But yeah, really looking forward to uh, watching Tommy Hodgson. Um, very good fighter, and all of them again from the amateurs to the pros. It's come along really well, very skillful. Got a very good brain set inside the ring. Um, a really good fighter, to be honest. I think he, um, he, he will do well and lift titles. I totally agree with that. But considering for like a lot of fighters who fought from like a Newcastle, rating Ray, Ray arena is like pretty much out in the sticks, but. You guys always fill this place up, though, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the North East crowd's a great crowd. And like I said, the Red Arena is a bit of a drive for people, really. But when they get here, it's, it, it is a good arena to fight in. It's a nice arena to fight in. The crowd's good. Um, so, yeah, no, for these types of shows, it's a very good arena, a very good venue. Oh, nice. Oh. They're both landing then. They're both landing then, they are, yeah, definitely. But you can see Nathan, I think, has put a little bit more spider to his punches as these rounds has went on. He might be looking to get us Alexander out of, out of this. Oh, 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 oh exactly. that's a beautiful shot. Nice combination. I think he's hurting there, but he's Nathan just needs to a little bit more pick his, pick his punches there. I mean, beautiful shot. I think if he, uh, he, he might be looking to get Fonz out of here, like I said. Be ahead of a statement if he does. I mean, to give you guys confidence, when your opponent like smiles at you, you know it's not really a smile. It's a case of, yeah, you got me. Yeah, there's very far, a few in between that when they do smile, they do say bring it on. But most of the time when they do, it is because you've heard them. You've got to react to them when you've heard them. But, you know, you always get that mad one who smiles at you and you know it's like in a brick wall. You know, <laughs> he's just coming at you. Very mature performance from Nathan so far. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I definitely think he's ready for that next step up. Next step. An opponent and um, oh, hopefully not an area title. I think he's, he's five and all. I think this will be six and all tonight. So, oh, what a look. Beautiful. I think that definitely got a reaction out of Fonz Alexander. And a lovely left hook to follow with it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, these, these punches here he's landed with is... It's been beautiful. It's been very, very nice. He's, again, his, his, his punch selection tonight has been, been fantastic. Okay, here we are. The sixth and final round. I have uh, Nathan five nil up, but credit to Fonz, he's taking some good shots and he keeps on coming. Five nil. What to Forrest? Yeah. What have you been watching? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Nathan's boxed really well at night. They, um, definitely, yeah, five nil up. Like I said, been saying all night. So, shot selection tonight's been brilliant. Um, very mature performance for Nathan, to be fair. Like I said, I think he's, he is ready for the next step up. We all know what Fonz is and he's here to do a job, but, you know I mean, Nathan's part on display tonight. I think, he's, I think he's looked really well and, to be honest, he's looked, um, he's looked fit, he's looked strong. Punches has been good, his guard's been good, you know. Like I said, I think if uh, Fonz was coming to win, I think he'd be in a lot, a lot of trouble tonight. 
Oh, there we go. We just talk about Fonz just let his hands go there a minute ago. And, you know, let Nathan know that he's there. He's gonna he's gonna jump him. I was saying earlier in in between one of the rounds when he was muted there that uh, Neil Fannin is that calming influence in the corner for you guys. Yeah, Neil so calm in the corner, but it's what you want. But if you're in a like uh, my last fight, you know, is obviously my hardest fight. And, you know, there's a lot of drama in me getting dropped and whatever, but uh, Neil's just so calm. He keeps you calm. So when you go back to the corner, you're thinking, oh, what's going on? You know, he's, he's telling you, he's calm. He keeps you calm. He keep, gets your focus ready for, oh, beautiful shot. Beautiful shot from Nathan. Nice should turn from Fonz, but beautiful right hand from uh, Nathan Fonz there. Um, yeah, keeps you calm, cool, collected. And, you know, he's, he's the man you want when you're in the corner and you're going to war. He's definitely the man you want. I tell you what, you know, Fonz Alexander, he's earned his money tonight, hasn't he? He most certainly has, you know, definitely has. Yeah, he's earned his money tonight. He's part of the show. You know, like I said, he, to be honest, he's had to leave his hand. Fonz is probably the most I've seen him chuck yeah. in quite a lot of his fights because he had to. Because I believe if he wasn't, Nathan would have stopped him tonight. He's, he's had to try to do something to keep Nathan, you know, at bay at times. You know, Fonz missing wildly there with a the big right hand. You know. Although well, every time I've interviewed Nathan after one of his fights, he's always very, very self-critical. So he's somewhat of a perfectionist. He is. He's very critical of himself. He has been all his life, uh, ever since I've, I've known him. But he's got he's to be happy with himself here tonight. He, I mean, he's, he, he cannot be, you know. I mean, like, oh, beautiful shot. That hurt him. That hurt him. Yeah, that caught him. A little nod from Fonz there. Let him know that he, he got him there with a beautiful shot. But I mean, like I say, he's got to be happy at night. There's a, a, a number of times where he's hurt Fonz tonight with, with some nice punches. Like I said, Fonz has had a fight tonight because if not, Nathan would stop him. So, so you know, he's got to be happy with this performance. And uh, like I said, it's on for the next. And Nathan. Balls at least two boxes. And we're going to the referee's scorecard. Joe Winner with a score of 62 55 points. Nathan! Oh. Congratulations, Nathan. I'll try and grab him for a quick interview. All right, mate. <laughs> Nathan Forrest, congratulations. Another win. Dominant performance, brutal performance. And going by uh, Fonz Alexandra at, at the end of the fight, it was very impressive, you too. Yeah, he, he was full of respect for his fans. He said before he'd been following my career already. He said he didn't even want to box me, but that's just pro boxing, and that's the matchmaking. And he's a hell of a name to have on my record, really. He's a very, very uh, well-respected journeyman. He carries a lot of power. Um, 
he, he's dangerous. He'll maybe lose 10 or 12, 15, and then he knocks someone's spark out and he'll do that again and again. So you have to be wary of his power. So a good opponent. I mean, congratulations to him. Very, very, very tough man though, isn't it? I mean, he took some massive shots. Yeah, he took some good shots. I was busting him up with a jab. Um, I caught him with some good body shots as well. Um, and, and, and he took them and carried on. Caught him with some good right hands and some good looping right hooks as well. Um, but he's a tough man. To, uh, he's a he, he's a tough man to, to hurt. Really, there's not many people who do hurt him. So, please, that could give a good performance and a and a dominant one. There are six rounds in the bank. You hoping to be out again before the end of the year? Maybe look for an area title real soon. Um, I was supposed to be out again before the end of the year. Um, uh, different uh, different things didn't pull through, so I might not be out before the end of the year. Um, it's looking like, but listen, I've had a very, very active year. I've had, um, I've had four fights this year, um, ju just over a year as a professional. I had my debut last August, and uh, so about 13 months, and I've had six fights, gone six and zero, oh, never lost a round. Um, so I'm quite happy with how busy I've been. So if I don't get out before the end of the year, it's not the end of the world. All right, Nathan, I'll let you go celebrate with your friends and family and Neil Fannin. Congratulations to him and that as well. I had Tommy Hodgson on commentary. Very proud of you. So again, congratulations. Tommy Ward. Tommy Ward, wasn't he? You said Tommy Hodgson. <laughs> Thank you very much, Martin. Shout out Sport and Icons. Cheers, mate.
final this evening. Undefeated, making his third professional appearance. When night down seven pounds from Jarrow, Taliban win. Robbie Harmon. Okay, we have six rounds in the lightweight division. Robbie Coleman versus Lewis Norman. Lewis Norman was enjoying the crowd there, teasing a bit. Robbie Coleman, of course, is the home fighter. Trains at the built-in gym. Fantastic gym over there. Robbie was a, a very, very good amateur. In fact, um, I did an interview, if anyone wants to check it out, when he was um, an amateur, when he won the Northern Area uh, Championship. He loves boxing, the showman. Now, Lewis Norman, um, I follow him on, on uh, Twitter. He follows sporting icons as well. And he's a, he's a very game lad. He loves, loves, loves boxing. Very game lad. Using the one-two very well there, Robbie. Using the jab very well as well. Nice left hook to the body. Lewis Norman, he's been around a while. He took a bit of time off. Now he's back again out on the circuit. A true boxing man. With a Muhammad Ali tattoo on his right calf. Loud, loud crowd. Robbie Coleman bringing the crowd tonight. I mean, these are the kind of shows that Northeast needs. I mean, this arena is packed, is loud from the very first fight right the way up until what looks like it's going to be, everyone's still going to be there for the final fight. Isn't that right, Danny? Uh, we've got two more great fights coming up now. Uh, I mean, crack and fight of Robbie. You know, yes, North brought the crowd tonight. And I think every boxer who's came tonight, everyone has, and I've doing really well. Give credit to everybody. Oh. Was that a trip or was that a good shot? Oh, he's down. There's a lot of aggression from Robbie there. I think it's a body shot that done it. Second round, round two. 
Okay, so round number two for Robbie Coleman versus Lewis Norman. If you've just joined us, this is round number two. Robbie Coleman at the end of round number one dropped Lewis with what looked like a body shot. But it looked like potentially he hurt Lewis a few moments before that as well. But he made it to his feet. Oh, he's hurt again. Robbie's hurt again. Oh, there we go. Big left. <laughs> big, big shot. He gets to his feet. He's going to continue. It was definitely hurt then. Robbie. Wow. Robbie the showman. You absolute savage. He's going for it. Oh, he's down again. For the third time. It's just stop it. Stop. In comes the towel. The towel's in. Robbie Coleman, second round stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, as the referee waits to bring the balls together, it takes two fighters to make a contest like that, please. Give them both a massive round of applause. <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> Lewis Norman just said, he just hits too hard. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and one minute, 18 seconds of round number two, your winner by knockout. Robbie! Oh! Well done, Robbie. Well done. Right, let's grab a quick word of him. Robbie! Robbie Coleman, you absolute animal. Yeah, me a little bit. Just love being in there. First six rounder, and uh, got the job done early. Didn't go out the full six rounds, but I've got the engine anyways, but I wanted to get her not out. I wanted to show everyone I'm about. Now, Lewis Norman's a very, very tough man. So to get a stoppage over him, you've got to be very, very heavy-handed. Yeah, yeah. I knew it was going to be a tough fight. Well, I asked for a tough fight. Obviously, um, his record shows it, but I know that like, I've trained hard. I prepare well every fight, and I knew I was coming for it, and I'll bring it every fight. I'm, I'm coming for everyone. Well, at the very end there, Lewis Norman, he went over to your crowd, who you brought a hell of a crowd, and he said, 
He just hits too hard. Yeah, mate, uh, obviously, I haven't really got that um, appreciation yet of me, how hard I hit, but uh, now everyone knows how hard I hit, do hit. Anyway, are you going to be out before the end of the year, hopefully? Yeah, I've got to, I've had a little um, problem behind it, uh, obviously, my right hand, but I'll probably heal up the next two weeks and see what it's like, but I'll probably be out, like, I love to fight, you know what I mean? That's what I'm about, and I'm like, I'm, I'm coming now. And a quick shout out to all these fans out here. You brought a hell of a crowd with you. Yeah, uh, obviously all these here yeah, like make it happen, you know what I mean? I wouldn't be on these shows if it for all these. So they're buying the tickets, all my sponsors, like all love you as a bitch, you know what I mean? They're making it happen for us, so that's what it's about. Well, congratulations to you, congratulations to Bill and Hall. Well done, my man. Thank you, mate. Nice pizza and nice keep on. Good on, son. And here's the floor this evening. Please welcome to the ring. Oh, Alan 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 Walter. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is sponsored by Empire. It will be six rounds in the light heavyweight division, and it will feature the man to my right, undefeated, making his fifth professional appearance, weighing 12 pounds, three pounds, from Grimsby, Lincolnshire, Tom Ramster. <laughs> the crowd's booing him. And his opponent this evening. Two fights, two victories, one huge win by knockout, making his third professional appearance. Wait, 12 stone, three pounds. From Bishop Auckland, County Durham, El Cannon, Callum Walton. Come on, Callum! All right, Callum Walton versus Tom Ramsden. Callum Walton, 2 0. Oh. Tom Ramsden, 3 0 oh, with one draw. So both these guys, they don't know how to lose. And alongside me again, I appreciate it, Matt McCallum. Good to see you, my man. Hello again, bud. So, um, yeah, we've got a genuine 50 50 fight here. I'm looking forward to seeing this. But these are the kind of fights where it's all very well fighting journeymen, but journeymen for the most part will just tuck up, 
and go away. But when you're fighting fighters who come to win, there's usually openings there for you. But likewise, you can get count yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, certainly these two guys, I didn't want to give away that order they? so early on in their career. Um, but they, they, they want to get that win. You know, they'll do everything possible. But that, you know, does certainly good shot over the top there. Now, Callum Walton, he's uh, managed by one empire. He's got uh, Jamie Sheldon over there, who's been hanging yeah. around uh, Logan Paul recently. So big up to him. You know who? Logan Paul. Hi. Yeah, he, he yeah, does his rap support him. I'll fight him. You'll fight Logan Paul? Oh, yeah, I the Money fight, innit? Yeah, I don't think Logan Paul will take it, though. Yeah, smash him. <laughs> you definitely would. This is a very, very interesting fight. I said both of them undefeated. Callum Watt on 2 0. Tom Ransdon 3 0 with one draw. But Callum's last fight, where he won a points decision, where he dominated it, he was very, very critical of his own performance. Do you, as a fighter, Matt, where if it, even if you win on points, you just, you're just overly critical of yourself. Yeah, definitely. I think I think all all fighters will agree. You, you're your own worst critic. You know, you want to you want to do everything absolutely perfectly, and um, you know sometimes it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's it's went that way. You know. El Canon. I'm just to Callum Fennick. First thing he said when I when I said well done, mate, it was brilliant. He went, I, I thought I was shit, <laughs> and it, he needs a little bit. He needs a little bit of time to process it, and re watch it back, and realise actually he was absolutely fantastic. But you know, we we see something totally different to what what he sees and feels in there. You know. But if we're being honest, there's no such thing as the perfect performance unless you go in there, dominate for a couple of rounds, don't get hit, and then stop your opponent, which never happens. It does look, look, at, look at Robbie Coleman there. I mean, wow. is that the perfect performance? Well yeah, you know, for his third pro fight, absolutely perfect. All right, end of round number one. Second round two. Okay, so round two for Callum Walton, 2 0 versus Tom Ramsden, 3 0 with one draw. So round number two. Where's the other lad from? I don't know. Oh, oh Manchester, sorry. Manchester. So does he, is he late to get on the road now or something? Or? I'm not sure. All I know is his record, 3 0 with uh, one draw. Um, I mean, I'm going to presume he's got ambition because he's he's throwing back at times. Again, everybody who's watching, I know that you've also got the option of the Matchroom show and the Sky Sports Boxer show. And for everyone who's tuned in tonight here live, I appreciate you. So again, thank you very much to all the new subscribers as well. Um, I see all of you come on through. So I do appreciate it, your support in the North, the Northeast. The local shows, the grassroots. These shows are the backbone of boxing. I mean, for me, I think that uh, Callum Warren won the first round. 
so far he's doing well this round as well. Oh. You agree, mate? Yeah, I think um, you know he, he's landing more punches, and he looks he looks tired. Yeah, the other kid, you know, he's seems all right, but uh, I don't think he's he's not landing as much. He's not getting through with as much, you know. And Callum looks he looks like he's he's in control. It feels like he's more in control. This one is a bit of a well under the left eye of Ramsden. Look, ooh, what eye under his right eye. There is, ooh, eye. Oh, he has one there as well. He's putting his shot together very, very nicely, is uh, Callum. Really, really nice lad, but that bell goes. He's savage. Aren't we all? Hey. <laughs> Especially you, Matt. Isn't it great though, Matt, that it doesn't matter if you're from Newcastle, from Gateshead like yourself, from Sunderland, from Durham, from Borough, everybody comes together in boxing ultimately, don't you? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I've, I've just got to touch on Joe's Boxing Promotions, what they're doing up here. It's fantastic, you know. This is a small whole show, but look at this show. It's absolutely packed in a brilliant venue. Um, but it's absolutely packed. We've got some great lads on tonight, great ticket sellers, and um, big up the Job's brand, you know? We, we, we want to take it all the way. Well, there's well over a thousand people in here tonight, and what's great about it is from the first fight all the way through the entire night, everyone has stayed, which is fantastic. Matt Trim, boxer, Queen's free take note. Round three. All right, so this is round number three of a six-round fight in the light heavyweight division. Of course, Callum, he's a super middleweight, really, but because of uh, same-day weigh-in. It's, it's, it's super middleweight, really, isn't it? I mean, I mean, what did they actually weigh in? Do you know? Was it 80 kilo? I'm not sure. I've, I've weighed in same day, 80 kilo. But I was still... It's still flash and tell this super middle wheel. But technically, I suppose it is light heavy, isn't it? <laughs> I'm a cruiser weight at the minute. <laughs> I'm light heavy. <laughs> I'm gonna be mean. With Tom Ramsden, he's uh, showboating a little bit, even though I think he is getting hit. He's showboating, but not really firing too much back. He's, he's trying to be a bit tricky, isn't he? You know, he's, he's trying to throw a feint. He doesn't know what he's doing with his arms, and he's trying to put Callum off. But Callum seems Callum's, Callum's in control. He's not he's not phased by it. Now I'm sure that uh, Callum Callum Warren will watch this fight back. And uh, in the chat, just in case you can't check the uh, live chat, shout out to Alicia Scott who's there cheering on Callum from herself, Joe and Christine. So shout out to you. And shout out to everybody else in the chat as well. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for subscribing as well. You are really helping the small hall shows by doing that. I think round number three, Callum is doing He's really starting to get on top of Ramsden right now. But Ramsden seems to be enjoying it though, you know. Oh. Nice combination of jabs there from Tom Ramsden.
El Cannon keeping very, very calm. Oh, good left hook. Oh, he got him with a right on that one. Oh, but Ramsden fires back. But Cannon Walton is just stalking him. He's here to fight. He's here to win. But he's got to be careful of anything coming back. All right. Final couple of seconds of round number three. I have Good. three nil up. Yeah. Second attempt, round four. Right, round number four. Callum Walton versus Tom Ramsden. Callum Walton, 2-0. Oh. Tom Ramsden, 3-0 and oh, with one draw. For me, I've got Callum Walton, 3-0 up. What about you, Matt? Yeah, yeah, I would have to give him um, those three rounds. Um, I tell you what, though, you know, he's he's controlling the fight. But again, you've just got to stay switched on. I, 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 and I think you know you're showing a lot of a uh, lot of maturity here, you know, and he's staying he's staying very um, very calm when he needs to be, and then he then he lets him hands go, you know, and he, and he he can tell he's got power. Now, when you do like a six rounder like this one is Matt, and and if you feel that you've won the first three rounds, really, as long as you don't get stopped, you've pretty much won the fight. Can complacency set in? Maybe overconfidence. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, you could always get caught out with that, you know, catch yourself out. But really, if you if you've got a nice, healthy lead like that, your opponent's going to have to do something. He's going to have to really mix it up, you know, which which does happen in fights. But although it looks like the left eye virtually closed of uh, Tom Ramsden there, virtually. Are you getting your lefts and rights mixed up again? I could be. <laughs> I could be. <laughs> this is right, isn't it? This one. Is that the one you're on about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're like, his left. <laughs> oh! I mean, you can see that Callum Walton's certainly carrying power. You can see that he's hurting Tom, but Tom's got a good poker face on him. He's a big, strong lad. I mean, they're both big lads. But he. You can, you can see, you know, he's obviously got a, a good amount of background, you know, and good amount of pedigree. And um, it all comes with, you know, the technique you learn in the amateurs, you know. He's got a good boxing style. And, and, and on the end of those punches when he lands, he's got power. You're definitely right, Paul V. He's definitely cutting the ring off there, without a doubt. Sorry? He is, and he's not just, I mean, he's not getting reckless either, is he? He's doing really well. Just picking them. Every shot he lands, he's hit the target every time. He is. That's the voice of Danny McKee there, who, of course, is running the show, working with uh, Matty Jobs. Final 10 seconds of round number four. I personally have this four rounds to zero in favor of El Cannon, Callum Walton.
Second turn, round five. Yeah. All right, round number five. I've got Callum Walton four rounds up. This is a six round fight. It's in the light heavyweight division. But Tom Ramson coming out, peppering that jab. Again, I appreciate everybody popping in. This is the chief support. Next up will be the main event. The hitman, Tommy Hodgson, will take on Connor Lee Doherty. And that will be in the super lightweight division. So main event after this one. But this is round number five of Callum Walton versus Tom Ramsden. Again, let me reiterate, thank you to everybody who has tuned in. Thank you very much for subscribing as well. You're helping me out. You're helping the small shows out, the small hall shows. And this is what we like, right? Pretty much all the fights tonight have been, I don't say 50-50, but you know, not far off it. And I think a lot of the main shows can, can learn a lot from that, that boxing fans appreciate when you match them correctly. And of course, all the fighters tonight, they're all prospects, of course. And all of them have taken some good hard learning ones. Robbie Coleman, who fought before this one, got a round number two stoppage after dropping Lewis Norman three times and the towel comes in. But Callum Walton, he's got him against the ropes there. He could, Ramson could be in trouble if he's not careful. But he done well there to get out of it. He moved his feet. But he's still alive, as in he's still throwing punches back, though. So, well done to Tom Ramsden. Very, very tough guy, but Callum Walton is a class act. Uh, Tommy Hodgson's on next in the main event. So this is round number five of six rounds. Oh, big straight right there. Tom looked hurt, but he got out of it. All right, there you have it. Six and final round. So five rounds down into the final round, Matt. How you got this good? Yeah, I, I would give. Uh, I would say Callum's got a whitewash at the minute. You know, it's been a really good fight. You know, but I, again, I think he's done enough to win every round so far. But don't switch off. Exactly. He's in cruise control right now, but he's still stalking. It looks like he wants to stop it. He don't need it. He can be very proud of this performance tonight, I think. Oh, he took one back there. Yeah, he took, took a couple there in quick succession, you know. Just, again, got to be careful.
Oh, they're both firing. When you're in like the final round and you know you won, is it more about trying to just finish in spectacular fashion or is it pleasing the crowd or is it you just want to trade up? Sorry, but look at this kid. He, I don't know what he was doing. He's doing some sort of shuffle there. <laughs> Callum Colton with a shot, you know, it's, it's dangerous. Could have been game over. Could well have been. I mean, listen, if you if he, he he's he's gonna keep the same discipline he's he's kept for the last five rounds. You know, why would he change it now? Yeah. But if he if he catches him with a shot, Callum will, will finish him, you know, he'll smell blood just like a shot. It does look like he's going for it though. His corner team should be telling him not a showboat. It's too, it's too late in the game to be showboating now. Exactly. He, he, he needs to just set about him if he wants any chance. Because he, he's got to stop Callum, you know what I mean? This, this Tom lad. So he should just he should just be uh, completely setting about him now. Well, yeah, I think in this kind of position, if you're Tom Ramsden, you're going, right, I'm five rounds down, I need the stoppage. Unless maybe he's just accepted defeat and he's happy to go the distance. <laughs> a bit of a trade-off on that one. Oh, big shot. There you have it. Six rounds to zero. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, as the referee calls them together, how about a huge round of applause? And we go to the referee's scorecard, Joe Winner, with a score of 60 points to 54. Whitewash. And Cannon! Well done, mate. Well done, Callum. All right, I'm going to grab him for a quick interview in a second. All right, I'm going to grab Callum for a quick interview after this one. As soon as he finished posing. <laughs> Excellent performance. Well done, Callum. Hey, Callum. No, 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 stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. Callum, congratulations. Excellent performance. Thanks, mate. Um, again, a little bit frustrated with my own performance, but I'll take six rounds to nil. So we came for the win, so that's what we got. You were disappointed last time. You can't be disappointed in this one. I know you said you are, but you can't be, surely. That was an undefeated fighter, though. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I can't really complain, like you say, undefeated fighter. Won every round, but just little things that we work on that I couldn't quite get off. So, credit to him. He was up with a good boxer, so fair play. Now, I'm doing the, the commentary there with uh, uh, Matt McCallum, and both of us are green. You're five rounds up. You don't need to be doing what you're doing in round number six, but you're doing it anyway. You're going for him. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I thought I might have had one, one round maybe, so I wasn't sure if it was 5-0. So, I'm not looking for the knockout, but I just, I like to increase the intensity, it's just the person I am. It just increases the rounds go on, and uh, today we didn't get the stoppage, but 
like you say, a good 6-0 victory. So happy with stuff to work on. So extra happy, to be fair. You agree with that? Yeah, 100%. He been out for a bit. He missed out on his last bout due to illness. And it went through the gears there, didn't it? Started. The longer it goes on, the better Callum will get. Uh, eight, tens, the, the better he'll get, the, long, the longer the distance. Got, got the best engine, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, I think it'll be awkward for a lot of people because he's very tricky. He doesn't throw a lot of power so he can move as soon as he's hit, you know? We expect a bit more. We, we expected a bit more of a come and have a go, but 6-0, six 6-0, nil, six nil, isn't it? Al Cannon, well done to you. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks to everyone that comes out to watch as well. What a support every time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for your main event of the evening. Please welcome to the ring, Conor Lee Doherty! And his opponent this evening, please welcome to the ring, Tommy Hitman Hudson! The main event. Let's wait for the introduction from the master of ceremonies. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, right here, right now, the time to shine. Are you ready? Great oh. Arena, are you ready? The following contest will be sponsored by Empire. There will be six rounds in the super lightweight division. They will teach his man to my right, making his seventh professional appearance. Weighing 10 stone exactly. From Leeds, Connor Lee Doherty. And his opponent this evening, the man facing him across the ring. Undefeated, making his eighth professional appearance. Weighing 10 stone exactly from North Shields, Tony Rear. Tony Hickman Hudson. 
Keep your heads up, keep your punches up. I will knock him on the back of the head. You feel my defend yourselves all the time. Stick to us. Round one. Main event. Tommy Hodgson versus Connor Lee Doherty. Tommy Hodgson, 7 0. Connor Lee Doherty, 5 1, I believe. This is a six round fight in the super lightweight division. Yeah, another 50 50 fight, you know. Um, two kids with, with winning records. Undefeated fighter and Tommy. And this other lad here, he's come from Leeds. He's not come here to roll over, he's not come to lose. We've got a proper ding dong on our, on our hands, yeah. Yeah, we know what Yorkshiremen are like there. Proper gritty, proper tough. This is Yorkshire versus Northeast. Although Tommy Hodgson, he fought about, I think about three weeks ago, here on another show. Keeping active, he's been out of the ring for a while. A fight date fell apart and whatever else. You can see the trainer Ross over there shouting at Tommy. Big, big support for Tommy Hodgson here. Big support. In fact, when Tommy Hodgson announced he was turning pro, I did the interview with Tommy Hodgson in the Walls End Boxing Academy, where he announced he's turning pro. He's very, very good friends with Joe Laws, who defeated uh, Mark Hennessy Jr. tonight on the Sky Sports Show. So congratulations to the Benwell Bomber. Yeah. Benwell Bomber, great win though, wasn't it? Definitely. Shout out Joe. Absolutely fantastic performance. And uh, you should get a, a contract with Sky now. Get up, lad. Now, Joe Laws is currently trained by Matty Job. So he's, he's in your gym. He's part of your stable. Yeah, he's a stable mate, you know. And, hey, listen, it's brilliant, man. He's got a big following. He's a character and um it's just meant it's meant for the northeast it's meant for him and um yeah keep you know keep keep bringing it keep smashing it i said like a tommy he's uh, very good friends with uh, joe lord pair of nutcases along with april hunter and that as well shout out april shout out to savannah marshall and that as well Oh, Tommy loves to fight though, you know, he's got that Team GB background. Now I'm presuming, even though that um, Conor Doherty is from Leeds, he's wearing the, uh, the green shorts, I'm going to presume he's got some kind of Irish heritage there. Obviously with a name like Doherty as well, so. Although Docky is a leave a Scotch name as well, but very good first round. Very good first round. How are you all scoring it? Come on, Tommy, lad! Right, round number two of a scheduled six rounds. Tommy the Hitman Hodgson versus Connor Lee Doherty. So your gum shield is falling out. 
for the second time now of Conor Lee Docky. The referee is, if it happens again, the referee then the power of the words. With the gum shield, it has to be moulded correctly to the teeth. But sometimes fighters do forget theirs. Maybe that, maybe that situation they had to borrow somebody else's or and didn't have time to mould them. Is it normal for gum shields to fall out so easy? No. He spotted out. But I mean, I think that's unlikely because, like, you know, it was a, it was a competitive first round. Boxers do that, you know, do it to buy time, do it to upset the rhythm of a fight, they'll spit the gum shield out, try and do it slightly. I don't think that's what happened there, you know, I think he genuinely took a, took a shot, took a jab, and, he's, and it just it came out, you know. Although the chat's quite split as to who they want to win. Some people cheering on Tommy, some people cheering on Connor. But the arena is very pro Tommy. Yeah, I'm certainly cheering Tommy, he's a good lad, I know him. And uh, Northeast kid, well, this is a good fight. This, this, this lad, you know, like I say, he's coming out of win and he's, he's shown some nice, tidy boxing. Oh, that's a good right there by Tommy, but Docky, he took it well. Oh, a, a good left, left hook by Tommy there as well. Good counter. But Connor Docky, he's firing back though, isn't he? Yeah, he is. I mean, you know. I trained well, but, but look, look, look at the boxing that um, Tommy's shown. You know, so it's, it's just some lovely shot variation. Shot! Oh, big left! Big left! Well done, Tommy. Big, big shot. He's been looking for a knockout. He may well come today. Do you think I'll let him continue? Come on, Tommy! The gum shield's out again. That's the third time the gum shield's oh, come out there. I mean, he took the drop and made <laughs> it. Was, a shot. It was a hook backhand or a backhand hook. <laughs> it was ahead of a shot. I think this extra weight division may well have helped Tommy on this one. He's a lot stronger. Oh, big uppercut there by Tommy. Oh, is that body shot? A bit, maybe a bit low. Excellent jabs. You can see Tommy Hodgson, he's got that Burley background. He's got that uh, Team GB background. But he needs to be careful because, whoa, oh, Tommy's throwing. But he needs to be careful of the counters. Oh, he's hurting him. He needs to be careful of the counters, though. He's taking some punishment. I can see the referee stopping in here. Now, 10 seconds left. He might just survive it. Big, big round for Tommy Hodgson. That's why they call him the Hitman. Round three. All right, round number three. What a round! That last round, absolutely brilliant by uh, by, by Tommy. Dominated, 10 eight round. But I mean, Conor Lee Docherty was throwing back at the end there, and he was catching Tommy a couple of times as well, so he needs yeah, to be careful of that. He's shown a lot of heart. He's shown he's, he's tough, this kid, you know? Um, that was a hard round for him, and um, you know, look, He's, he's come up on the third, you know, he's nice and compact. But Tommy just needs that chance again, needs that opening. Exactly. Don't go looking for the knockout, wait for it to come. Oh, 
He's taking a couple back there. So now the Tommy doesn't usually get hit, but Docket he's come to win. He's come to fight. So full credit to him. Yeah, I mean, hey, what a fight. What a fight. Shot. Shot again, right hook, left hook. Come shows out. Come shows out again. That's the fourth time. It's the fourth time the gum shows come out. It's Tommy's one. Is that Tommy's? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, right, my bad. So three gum shields for Connor Docky, one for Tommy Hodgson. I was gonna say, <laughs> you know, like on snatch. Why? Why do you want to buy a caravan with no fucking wheels? Why do you buy a gum shield? Don't fit in your fucking mouth. <laughs> it must be Irish to kill it. <laughs> it's gotta be. Both of them are landing some pretty good shots at times, but I think Tommy is, is landing that, that, just that bit more. <coughs> this, is, this is a proper fight. It really is. He's, he's, oh, another big right hand there. Oh, a big left uppercut as well. Cockett, he's tough, isn't he? Oh, he's really tough. Really tough. You know, survived that second round. He's come out strong here. He's landed some good shots on, on Tommy Hudson. Equally, you know, he's he's fucking hitting him with everything he's got, and this this Irish fella's taking it. He's got that uh, that Yorkshire steel in him, though, hasn't he? It really does. But it, but looks like at times Tommy's looking for that one big punch, rather than getting back behind his boxing. There you go. He's back. He's back to the boxing. Uh, as I said before, Tommy Hodgson, he's got that Burtley and, and the Team GB background. So he's a very, very, very good boxer. Can fight, he's showing he can punch very, very hard in a weight division that is quite heavy. Seconds out, round four. Alright, here we go. Round number four of six in the super lightweight division. Tommy Hodgson, seven and oh. Connor Lee Doherty, five and one. I believe he's five and one. I don't have the notes in front of me. But I think Tommy's winning this fight, but it's not an easy, easy fight. He's taking some shots back himself. Conor Dockey, he's got that uh, Irish and Yorkshire steel in him, that toughness. I would, I would have Tommy three rounds up, but yeah, the cert, he's been made to work for you, he really has. Certainly this second round was a 10-8 round. Shot. Lovely on, isn't it? Lovely left, oh, go, left hook over the top, and then he's out. He's out the distance. That's another one as well. He's boxing fantastically. There he is. Lovely! Again, gum shield out. That gum shield went flying out the ring. That's the fourth time that gum shield's come out. I wouldn't have to seen it on the camera there. That was fucking interesting. That wasn't straight into the ring. I think it's still flying. We sent it up gates here somewhere. <laughs> Shot. 
I'm pretty sure if that gum shield fall, flies out again, there's going to be a... Uh... He's not spitting out though. He, he, he's, off a, he's off a punch, you know what I mean? Hit him with a very clean punch, mate, and it's, it's flew out his mouth. It's like... Yeah. I suppose what he's... You kind of tell him to keep his gob shut, can not you? <laughs> to fight. That is true, but I mean, we have seen referees stop stop it before, though. But, but I suppose if he feels he's not doing it on purpose, then... I think he's warned him once, but he, you know, he may take a point, but I think it would have been harsh. It would have been very harsh. Right, so this is round number four of six. You've got Tommy Hudson winning all the rounds so far, Matt, you say? I have, yeah. I've got him three rounds up. Again, though, you know, he's... It's, it's not easy work for him, is it? A good fight. Very, very good fight. In fact, it's been some good fights on tonight, isn't there? Really has. Fantastic. So much they're trying to do up here in the north. You know, they're flying the flag for it, for the uh, the sort of smaller, small hole shows. Again, I appreciate everybody joining in tonight much appreciated i know there's other big shows on tonight on the zone and sky so i appreciate all of you and again thank you very much for subscribing tommy just got caught there good shot good backhand from the um the irish yorkshireman <laughs> is that what he is yeah he's yorkshireman isn't he? yeah it's good good job oh good exchange from both there both of them going to have a sore head tomorrow. Five. All right, round number five of six. Tommy Hodgson, this is Connor Lee Doherty. Tommy Hodgson has had Doherty on the floor in round number two with a big left hook. But while I think it's safe to say Tommy Hodgson is, I would say, won all these rounds, arguable about number four, potentially. But it's not a one-sided beatdown. Doherty has come to fight. He's landed some big shots on Tommy himself. There you go, another one. Yeah, both of them, both of them have taken some big shots tonight. <laughs> Michelle Walker, good comment. Oh, big left uppercut there by Tommy. Oh, and again. Big, big shots landed by Tommy Hodgson. Big shots. But it needs to be careful. It, it, it don't get counted back. Representing North Shields and the Northeast of Boxing. Oh, he's a big Newcastle United fan, is Tommy. Yeah, you're right, Geordie Angler. It's a 50 50 fight. Both coming to win. 
Another big shot by Tommy. Although underneath Tommy Hodgson's right eye, it's uh, swelling quite nicely under that. Yeah, nothing, nothing too, um, nothing too con concerning. I don't think. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, oh, what a shot! Comes here out again. No, I didn't think it, he has, it, 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 that's, that's one out of the shot. He needs a better fitted one, but again, it was a hard shot, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, oh, here we go, point yeah. deduction. It's not his fault, but it's like five times now his gum shield's come out. But each time it has been from a punch, he hasn't spat it out. So it is a bit unfair, but... Yeah, I mean, this is, I suppose, the rules of the game, isn't it? Oh, he's fired him up, though. Yeah, come on. Shot. Shot. Oh, big shot landed by Tommy. Oh, and again. Oh, I think, I think Cocky might be hurt a little bit, or not. Very good. All right. Second two, six, final round. Just been in the toilet and I found a gum shield in the urinal. <laughs> <coughs> right, hopefully the Wi-Fi connection has reset itself. I know it hasn't been ideal for everyone tonight, but I do appreciate everyone sticking by. Or stopping by, I say. Big up any 28 that no shield. So a knockdown in round number two in favour of Tommy Hodgson. In round number five, a point deduction against Connor Doherty for the gum shield falling out for the fifth time. So I think it's safe to say Tommy Hodgson is well ahead on the points now. Appreciate everybody popping by. Appreciate all of you. This arena's been packed, absolutely packed from the first fight all the way up to this one, the main event. So, shout out to all the crowd tonight. Shout out to all you lot in the chat. Everyone watching live. Everyone who's not watching live as well, if you've uh, watched this on the replay. Right, so as soon as this fight is finished, I will end, end the stream, so again, Final thank you to everybody. Tommy Hodgson firing, firing big, big shots in the second final round. I don't, I don't think he needs to do it, but he's giving the yeah, friends and family uh, and fans who have bought tickets to watch him fight, pure entertainment, pure value for entertainment. Shout out to Connolly Docket as well for making a very, very good fight of it. A shout out to Jobs Boxing. Bill Jeffries, my commentators tonight, Matt McCallum, Adam Heppel, and Thomas Patrick Ward. I appreciate all of you. You've enjoyed tonight, Matt? I uh have. -huh. Thank you very much. And uh, um, yeah, big thanks to Jobs Boxing Promotions. Put on a fantastic show game. And shout out to McCallum Boxing. 
Matt McCallum boxing. Matt McCallum boxing. Shout, shout out sport icons. Why not, mate? What you're doing is fantastic. Keep it up. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Right, I appreciate all of you. So when this fight is done, we'll wait for the announcement and then I shall end the stream. I appreciate all of you. Thank you very much. Oh, they're both firing. Final round. But I'll do an interview with Tommy as well. I'll do a quick interview with him after the announcement. Round of applause. And we go to the referee scorecard for the final time this evening. Your winner with a score of 59 points to 53. Tommy! There you go. All right, so I'm going to grab a quick interview with uh, Tommy Hodson. As soon as he's finished with his photograph. Hey, Tommy. <laughs> Tommy, A and O, congratulations, my mate. Buzz and I, buzz and I. After only a box two weeks ago, then before that was like 14 months out of the ring. So it's good to get them in back to back and just uh, get the momentum going again. Yeah, A and O, but um, he's a very, very game opponent. But I mean, it was right that, uh, the, that the referee dropped the point from him. But at the same time, he wasn't spinning it out. You were knocking it out. And I, 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 was, I was, I was, I was, I was totally calm at that because I, I thought I had him going a few times, and my coach just had to stick to what you're doing and bring him on, and that's how I was working. So, listen to them. Big left hook in round number two, though. Dropped him. I, I made it. That's what I mean. I was, I was, I was seeing him coming on. I was just edging off, and as he was throwing the jab, I was making him fall short and catching him with a backhand left too. Anyway, so you get the win. Your old pal Joe Laws pulls off the upset as well. I was watching it in the change room before. I'm buzzing for him. Didn't deserve it. Me, I'm buzzing. Proud, proud, happy for him, mate. Like. Will you be out before the end of the year, or you, or you take a bit, a bit of a rest now? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, I'll speak to them lot and see what they say. Like, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Well, congratulations. Excellent win. Eight and all, my man. Thank you very much, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers. <laughs> All right, thank you, everybody. I appreciate everybody. It's an excellent, excellent, excellent night of boxing. I appreciate all of you. Again, take care. Thanks for popping in. Good night. Good night. Thank you.